in the country leads undefeated Tulane against the stingy Southern Miss defense. Then, Toto, are you sure this is Kansas? The number two ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers bring their show on the road to Arrowhead Stadium for a Big 12 shootout against Oklahoma State. And in the nightcap, the 14th ranked Arizona Wildcats take on the 20th ranked Washington Huskies. A double, double header. Four of the top 20 teams in the nation duke it out. Strap yourself in. The football thrill ride starts now on Fox Sports Net. This is College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium is where we begin the 16th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers in Annapolis to take on the middies of Navy. Hello everyone and welcome inside the College Football Saturday studios in Los Angeles. I'm Kevin Frazier. Big day of college football right here on the net and as always I am joined by my partner, the Hall of Famer, Kellen Winslow. He's standing by with a little chalk talking. Kellen, we're talking about <laughs> West Virginia. They have a great running back. As a matter of fact, a guy you called a Barry, Barry Sanders, Sanders type, type rusher. Famous Amos Arroway. Famous Arraway. Amos Arroway. Kevin, this kid is great. I love the way he runs the football. They run a play called the counter play behind a huge offensive line that averages about 300 pounds across the front. Here it is right here. Tackle pulls, knocks out this tackle. The guard comes across, looks up in the hole here. Block down, block down. Then all the action starts right here. The quarterback and the, four, and the tailback have to sail it going one direction and coming back the other direction. When he comes back, he's got the option now to take it inside if there's a hole or to break it to the outside. His ability to be elusive and to make people miss is what makes this play go a big day for famous Amos. The Barry Sanders type rusher. 23 carries, 192 yards against Tulsa and last And a couple week. of dozen broken tackles. He's going to have a lot of those today. Okay, we will keep an eye on them. Should be a great crowd there. Let's take a peek at today's huge schedule. We're just moments away from Game 1. The 16th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers take it on Navy. Game 2 could be the game of the year in Conference USA. This one could decide who is the champion as Southern Miss and Tulane take each other on. At 7 p.m., number 2 Nebraska. It seems like they finally hit on all cylinders. They travel to Kansas City to take on Oklahoma State at Arrowhead Stadium. And then we finish up with a monster Pac-10 battle as Washington and Arizona, two top 20. 20 teams play in our nightcap. Kellen and I will return, of course, at halftime in between games with scores and highlights and analysis. And in case you missed it, last night the New York Yankees advanced to the American League Championship Series with a four zip win over Texas. And we will also keep you updated on Daryl Strawberry's condition. The Yankee slugger undergoes surgery for colon cancer later today. Of course, our thoughts and prayers with Daryl. But right now, let's get you out to Maryland and the guys who are calling game one of our quadruple header. Barry Tompkins and David Norian. Barry, hope you had a chance to get some of those Maryland crab cakes. You know, as a matter of fact, we did, unfortunately, Kevin, a few more shells than crabs. Wasn't the greatest, but we expect a pretty good ball game here today. Perfect weather conditions. Fall has really set in here, David. A little bit breezy, a little bit brisk, and Navy's going to have to deal. You heard Kellen Winslow already talk about it with one of the great players in America, Amos Zeroway. Yeah, we're going to see a bona fide Heisman Trophy candidate today, one of the three best backs in college football, Amos Zeroway. And what makes him special is his vision and his cutback ability in the open field. He hits the hole quicker than most backs will see this year, Barry. All right, and here at Annapolis, Navy is tough to contend with. Now, all week long, despite being a decided underdog, the midshipmen were walking around with T-shirts that said it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And now the big question, of course, can this dog hunt? Navy's very tough at home. They like to protect their own turf here in Annapolis. In fact, they've won 13 of their last 14 games here. They're playing in front of an entire brigade of midshipmen, and Navy has to get off to a good start today, Barry, if they're going to have success get this big crowd behind them. Yeah, they got to do that. And by their own admission, they have to play a near-perfect game. Can't have the errors that they've had earlier in the year. No, Navy's going to have to come up with some turnovers, and they're going to have to be almost perfect on offense to come up with a win. And most importantly, they're going to have to deal with the man you spoke of, famous Amos Zeroway. He's looking back on a 193-yard game against Tulsa last week, and he's looking ahead to do a little bit more damage against the midshipmen. Fired up here at Annapolis as the Navy midshipmen take the field. And Roger that, David. Uh, clear for flyby. Wow. I'll tell you what's the first time I've ever looked down on one of those. I mean, they came right by our broadcast position here. Very exciting, and this crowd really pumped up. Here's a guy who uh, feels that this could be a minefield, so to speak, just to use a little military jargon, for his team as uh, 
as they come in there to play a team that is very tough in this ballpark. Don Nealon, though, uh, been around the track more times than one. Uh, delightful guy. We had a chance to chat with him yesterday and uh, feels that he's got a good team, but he's thin. And Charlie Weatherby, I liked uh, his conversation. He said, he said what uh, the point spread on this game is about, what, 16 points, something like that? He said, heck, he said, I think we might win by more than that. <laughs> That's, uh, that shows you the type of confidence Weatherby has, and he should have some confidence, Barry. As we mentioned at the top, Navy very successful over the last two years here in Annapolis. Well, they have been 13 out of 14. This, as you can see, just a great atmosphere. Uh, families on blankets up on the grassy part uh, in the end zone to our left. And you can see Navy leading this series uh, five games to one. But uh, as you see, the last game was some 35 years ago. So uh, this is not a series that has been uh, ongoing. Evan Papadakis will uh, kick it off for the Naval Academy, and uh, he'll be kicking to Amos Zerway and Jerry Porter, both of whom can scoot. Porter's a guy played on the offensive side of things. Actually, it's going to be Antonio Brown who's going to be deep. Not Zerway, they try an onside kick, and the Naval Academy will get it. Well, Navy going into the book of trip, trips right off the bat, and now they wanted to bring the crowd into this game, David, and they couldn't do it any better than they've just done it. The kicker, Papadakis, recovered his own kick. Well, we've been told this is going to be the largest crowd in the history of Annapolis. And what a way to start a game. I mean, you're talking about spring and a surprise early on. Just an onside kick. The West Virginia kick return team retreating too early. Adam Creshawn celebrating. What a play to start off. Weatherby, the head coach, fired up on the sidelines as is his players. So now we will see the Navy option. As you can see, it's a little bit different. We'll talk more about it. This is the quarterback, Holly, on the pitch this time to Metcalf, and Metcalf will get about eight. Steve Holly, the junior quarterback out of Dallas, was in a battle in the preseason with Brian Broadwater for the quarterback position. He won it when Broadwater hurt his leg in the spring. It was a very close contest. Playing with a sore hand. We'll talk a little bit about the Navy offensive line. Blaine Kindler is a guy who will be playing in the hula bowl. He is playing guard simply because he has to. He's really a tackle, but the Navy really thin at that position. Irv Dingle gives them experience. He is the guy who will carry the ball more than any other. He's the fullback in the triple option. Here's the keep again, and this time the pitch to Wolf, and Wolf will have a first down inside the West Virginia 40-yard line at the 39. Barrett Green on the stop, but the Naval Academy getting off very quickly. Let's look at the West Virginia defense. John Thornton is a guy who uh, many NFL scouts are looking at and drooling, quite honestly. Robinette getting the start ahead of Forbes. We'll talk more about that. Barrett Green, the Navy people say he's quicker than anybody we got in our team. And he's a linebacker. Jerry Porter moving over from offense to defense. Still actually is a bit of a two-way player for West Virginia. This is a very good West Virginia team, but on the defensive side of the ball, they are a little bit thin. This time once more, Holly on the keep, and he didn't get anything. Maybe a yard. Chris Edmonds. First man to him for the Mountaineers. Well, Navy off to a quick start. Principle of Navy's offense, of course, is they want to keep their defense off the field. They want to keep West Virginia's offense off the field. And you can see what they've done on offense last season. This year, they are averaging 292 yards, despite the fact that they've had two losses. They are both in the category of forgivable losses. As I said, we will talk a little bit more about that. They lost to Tulane last week. It was a game they feel that they could have won. Flag is down, and uh, we'll see if this is a delay of game or perhaps somebody jumping a little bit early. It's going to go against Navy in any case. On the offense, five-yard penalty. Now, Navy, despite the fact that they are an option team, will throw the ball 15 to 20 times a game. They will throw it occasionally on first down. Now they're in a second and long situation. Now, last week we saw Rice against Texas. This was an option play for them, but I'm not sure it is for the Naval Academy. Straight back to pass this time, and a shovel pass underneath to, J to uh, Irv Dingle, and Dingle gets a couple back uh, inside the 40 to about the 39-yard line. Steve Holley, as we said, uh, a guy who was a free safety in high school. He only had 50 snaps as a high school player, so he's not a guy with a lot of experience as uh, you look at Irv Dingle. 
46 carries, 261 yards so far this year. He is the guy who will carry the, uh, the brunt of the attack, but in the triple option, the onus does fall on the fullback. Now, he's not carried the ball yet from scrimmage. He did catch that shovel pass a moment ago. Third down and 12. Quick pass this time for Vereen out of the backfield, and Vereen is going to be about two and a half yards short of the first down. David Cogdell makes the stop, and now Charlie Weatherby has a decision to make here. It will be a 48-yard field goal from here, or the midshipman could go for it. I have an idea they're going to do that. Yeah, I think they are going to go for it. Don't be surprised if you see Navy throughout the course of the afternoon going for it on fourth and short. A big part of Weatherby's game plan today keep control of the football, run the clock, shorten the game, and minimize the number of possessions West Virginia has with their powerful offense. They have a little bit less than two yards to go. Here's Holly rolling to his right, tucks it away, he'll keep, he's got the first down. Charlie Willoughby very confident in his football team. Chris Edmonds makes the stop. So far, the midshipmen doing everything right. And Holly has big shoes to, feel, to fill here at Navy. Chris McCoy, the quarterback last year, one of the most prodigious runners at the quarterback position in college history. And this is just a design play, a design keeper. Nice job by Hawley attacking the perimeter with his speed. And a good block by Jason Wolf, who was their best blocker coming out of the backfield. You can see in this option now, they line the backs up, other than the fullback, on a, in the slot position, actually a wing position. And that's Dingle, the fullback, straight ahead. He gets a cup. Now this Navy offense really starts with the fullback position. Maybe he wants to establish the fullback inside, and conversely, the West Virginia defense, they know they have to take away Irv Dangle. Take away the fullback, stretch the option outside, and you control the spread option offense. The ball at the 24-yard line. Once again, Holly the quarterback, Dingle the fullback. Seven-man front shown by West Virginia. And whistles blow, and... Might have taken a little too long, we'll see. So prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Second false start, it didn't hurt him the first time, but uh, Navy can't afford to be going backward like this. Now they've made a lot of mistakes, but they haven't been this kind of mistake. They've uh, Left the ball on the floor a few times, and that's been the big problem for Navy. And in Charlie Weatherby's opinion, that might have cost them the two games they lost. Slot left this time, three wideouts in the ball game. And Holly on the keeper inside the 20-yard line, and finally is just straightened up at the 20-yard line by Jerry Porter. And it's going to bring about a third and a long three. The Navy option is a little bit different than the option you'd see, for instance, up in Nebraska. Hawley all day long is going to look to keep on the option right up behind his fullback. The fake goes inside, and Hawley will follow that fullback upfield. A nice job of cutting back against the green on that last run. Good look at Barrett Green. As we said, uh, the Navy coaches said, we don't have anybody on our team who's as quick as he is at 6'1", 215. And the West Virginia coaches uh, talking about how much they like him, too. Here's the pitch this time, the Metcalf coming around, first down inside the 15-yard line of the 13. Holly making all the right decisions so far, David. Yeah, it's a real nice job by Holly to option off of Barrett Green, number 33, the speedy outside linebacker. There's Barrett Green coming up field. Holly makes him commit and then just dishes the ball off outside to Metcalf. Also a nice job by Jason Wolf the slot back blocking downfield. Yeah, they say he's their best blocker. So a first down inside the 15-yard line. The Navy on the move here. And they've got the crowd involved, which does not bode well for the Mountaineers. Gives straight ahead to the fullback Dingle, and he gets a couple to about the 12. That's the one thing about West Virginia's defense, and the West Virginia coaches were talking to us about that yesterday. They are kind of a freelance defense, and playing the option, you can't afford to be that. You have to stay home, and you have to make the right decisions. Well, def defensing the option is a, is a matter of keeping to your responsibilities, keeping to your lanes, and this defense has been dinged up, missing three starters, a lot of people filling in, so West Virginia has not had a lot of time to prepare for this complicated offense. Second down and eight. 
Holly this time on the pitch to Wolf, and it's well defended that time. Rather, it was, uh, yes, it was Wolf, and it was well defended by Mark Thurston. That play didn't have a chance. It was Dingle on the pitch, not Wolf. Now it's real evident early that West Virginia's taken Dingle away, the big fullback inside, and as a result, Navy has had some success outside on the option. So the ball just short of the 11-yard line now, third down and seven. Big play here for Navy. This time they bring Wolf in motion to the near side, and now Holly will call a timeout as a uh, little bit of confusion on the offense for Navy, and Holly won't uh, take a chance inside the 15-yard line. We'll come back. Navy will have it third and long when we come back. Well, Navy has used five minutes and 19 seconds to, for this drive down to the 12-yard line. Started with this, David. Got a kicker, Evan Papadakis. This is right off the top. Onside kick, West Virginia expecting a return. And watch the kicker, Papadakis, cover the onside kick himself. Great play and a nice call by Weatherby to open up a game against a heavy favorite. Well, a big call right here for Charlie Weatherby. As, uh, he's looking at a third down, his team that is looking at the third down and seven. And they jumped. Costas Hatsadakis from his left tackle spot jumps and uh, Charlie Weatherby says, what are you doing? Now yeah, Weatherby has to be real upset. I mean, Navy, their whole program is based on discipline, people going where they need to go. That's a third penalty on illegal procedure on the opening drive for Navy. Weatherby obviously not real happy. Well, as well he shouldn't be. And now he's in the third down in a long 12 situation. So this really is the first bona fide passing down that the Navy has had. Holly this time long count. And the pitch, and I think that was going to be a pass. But it's not going anywhere except backward. Mark Thurston makes the stop. I, I believe the way that play set up, David, that looked like it was going to be a pass. I well, mean, a halfback pass. Actually, they reversed out on the option. Tough to tell. It looked like he was pulling up to throw the pass downfield, but a great job by Mark Thurston, the redshirt freshman defensive end. Staying at home and playing the pitch. So Tom Vanderhorst will try what is now a 41-yard field goal. It's gone from a gimme field goal to a bit of a test here. Charlie Weatherby telling us within 40, he's very strong. Not a strong leg, though. But he gets this one good, and he gets it through by plenty. And the Naval Academy has jumped out to an early 3-0 lead, and they've done what they do so well, and that is eat up an awful lot of the clock. Six minutes and two seconds before West Virginia will touch it for the first time. Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. The change is forever. And by Marriott Hotels and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Well, a good look at the United States Naval Academy here at Annapolis. Just a beautiful setting. We had a chance to walk around yesterday. A beautiful day. I mean, boy, it uh, couldn't be nicer than this. One of the prettiest campuses I've set foot on across the country. And you know, Barry, this at one time was the capital of the United States. A little bit less than a year. A lot of history, a lot of tradition. Crab cakes left a little something to be desired, though. Well, that's why we have a chance to go back out tonight. <laughs> Brown and Porter will be the deep man once again. We have another kicker, Tim Shubzda. We'll kick this off the Naval Academy. Papadakis, uh, maybe he got a little dinged up when he recovered that onside kick. We'll yeah. try to find out. Papadakis is the onside kick specialist. So Shubzda hits this one, kind of sidewinds this one in the direction of Brown, and it goes out of bounds. So Brown's not going to have a chance. Very upset about that, too. Mark Bolger, the quarterback of uh, West Virginia, and uh, he doesn't get near the ink he probably deserves because of the presence of Amos Zeroway, of course. Zeroway uh, is the guy who is the marquee player, but this team goes in large part because of that man right there. Experienced up front, Brian Pukinas, a guy who uh, has already applied to med school, although med school may have to wait while the NFL beckons. He and DeGro both, as a matter of fact, are med school candidates. David Saunders missed last year after being the uh, team record holder in catches the year before. And guess what? His record was broken last year by Sean Foreman. They are loaded 
at the skill positions. They will get the ball in Zeroway's hands about 30 times in this ball game, and they will throw it about 30 times. That's the ideal offense for them. This is Zeroway on the pitch. Zeroway cuts back, still on his feet. Look out. 35, 40, 45, midfield. One man to beat at the 40, and he's run down at the 30-yard line. So famous end is Zeroway. Pick it up right where he left off last week against Tulsa. Unbelievable run from the top from Amos Zeroway. Just a super reverse spin move in the backfield. This play is designed to go off tackle to the left side. A pitch, and watch Zeroway reverse spin, and he gets loose in the secondary, and he is always a threat to go the distance. He is easily one of the top three backs in the country. Mike Weedle, the cornerback, finally tracks him down. But as you mentioned, Barry, this offense, one of the real underrated offenses and skill position players everywhere. 35-yard game for Zeroway on the first step. Now Bulger will go up, throws to Zeroway on the swing, or to Antonio Brown on the swing, and Brown gets it to about the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the Navy defense, and already they've been tested on just two plays. Jason Snyder, the only returner off that defensive alignment, at the left tackle spot. Matt Donio in the uh, two linebackers set. They really play nickel defense all the time. Jamie Doffermeyer is their leading tackle. He gets a lot of help from Mike Weedle, Lane Wilkins, and Hunter. So it's a, a nickel defense essentially all the time for the Naval Academy. This time out of the eye formation, Zeroway back in the lineup now. Play fake, goes with a throw. Does so wide open this time. Is David Saunders for the catch and a first down at the 15 yard line. Well, Saunders, as we said, was the leading receiver on his team in 1996. He blew out a knee after two a days last year. And there you see the numbers, 76 catches in 96, and he gets his record broken by his teammate, Sean Foreman, the next year. It's going to be a real key matchup today. Those two big receivers on the outside, both go 6'2 and over 200 pounds. They're working against a 5'7 quarterback and Mike Weedle, 5'10, and Rico Hunter on the other side. And you can look for the fade patterns a lot down in the red zone where they are now. Give this time to the fullback, Wes Owers, and Owers is going to be wrapped up for a loss of a couple. Gary Lane comes up to make the stop. Lane gives away 50 pounds to ours, but comes up and sticks it. Now this is really one of the best offenses that you'll see across the country. Great balance. Bulger, he's one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch in college football. And what's so tough about this West Virginia offense, Barry, you can't load up against the run. Even though Navy's going to put eight men up on the line of scrimmage and try to take Zeroway away, away, if you do that, you're going to get hurt by a very good passing game. Three wide out, single setback, that's zero way, and Bulger checking off here. Bulger straight back to pass. Punk fake throws over the middle, comebacker that time by Foreman. Foreman reading the quarterback, Bulger, very well that time, and just finding that little soft spot. Take a look at the way West Virginia plays offense. They average 32 rushes and 33 passes a game this year, as we said. That, and that's what their, their coordinators told us yesterday, that we want to run the ball with their way about 30 times a game, and Bulger's going to put it up about 30 times a game. You know, we keep talking about the skill position athletes. Four returners on the offensive line, and the offensive line is one of the top-ranked lines in college football. Third down and four. They bring ours up on the wing now. Starting in motion, here comes a blitz. Play fake, Bulger to throw, has to unload in a hurry and throws it away. Well defended by the Navy. Bulger had to rush that ball. He had hours open at about the four yard line. It would have been a first down. And now the Mountaineers will try a field goal and try to level things here. And Bulger had a two layered route. And as you mentioned, Wes Hours, the Starting fullback today escaped out into the flat. Bulger didn't pick him up, was safe with the ball, threw it away. Jay Taylor will come on and try a field goal. He's got a strong leg. 28-yard effort. Misses. Missed wide left. So the midshipman dodged a bullet, and what that does is it keeps this record crowd in the ball game as West Virginia comes up empty. And Don Nealon back to the old drawing board. He just kind of yanked this one to the left. 3 to nothing, Navy. They'll have it when we come back. Good look at the state capitol here in uh, the state of Maryland. Uh, this uh, Annapolis, of course, is the state capital of Maryland. 
Naval Academy has it back at the 20 yard line as they dodged a bullet. Holly this time on the keep gets two, maybe three. It's about the 23. Chris Edmonds makes the stop, and it it does seem, David, like the Mountaineers have made some defensive adjustments. I think it drop a script for this game. So far, things going just as planned. Getting a little good luck on the miss on the chip shot. West Virginia field goal attempt. A recovery on an onside kick, and they kept the clock moving on their opening drive. Ticking down under six minutes to go here in the first quarter. Ronel Reyes in the ball game now, wide receiver for the Naval Academy. They might have left a little early again. Dingle gets it across the 25 to 26, no flag. And it'll be third down and four. Well, Charlie Weatherby told us he's not disappointed with three yards on each carry, and now they're in a third and four. Time they bring Wolf out in the slot to the left side. And Holly checking off. He's got to hurry. He's not going to get the playoff. Well, he just did. Give it to Dingle straight ahead. Dingle's got the first down across the 30 to the 34. He just got that playoff. Barrett Green made the stop. Pretty good audible. Talking? Yeah, great audible. A check at the line of scrimmage and watch the right guard and the right tackle here. Great blocking up front to move for Dingle. And Dingle just taking the ball up in powerful running up inside. So a first down at the 34. Holly will go up on first down, looking deep. And it's caught this time by Jason Wolf into West Virginia territory at the 35-yard line. Good, strong arm shown by Holly there. Yeah, Holly has a strong arm. He's a very talented passer. A little bit worried this week coming into practice it, on Thursday, Friday, and into the game. He's got a bad right hand, but no evidence right there. That's a well-thrown ball to the outside. Just drilled that ball. But look at him spread the field here. It's a stack to the left side as they come all the way over by the yard markers. And now in motion comes Manny Metcalf. And Holly on the keep. Gets by the first man to the 25 out of the 24-yard line. Gain of 11 and a first down. Barrett Green on the stop. And they're taking advantage of Barrett Green's aggressive play. Well, they are. They're taking advantage of the movement of the linebackers, but they're also getting that front four block. Look at the offensive line of Navy working up front. The fake inside to Dingle. They're starting to establish the fullback, Holly with the keeper, and he's got good speed. He has better speed than Chris McCoy, the quarterback of a year ago. Don Nealon, reason to, reason to be a little bit concerned right now. Here's the same set. They stack three receivers, split far to the left side, and here's a quick screen this time. And now they're gonna throw back, and this is gonna be Holly. He's open at the 25. The 15, the 10, to the five-yard line, and Charlie Weatherby going deep into the playbook here. It was a pass to Brian Kennedy, looked like a flanker screen. Kennedy threw it back across the field to Holly, and Holly runs it down to the five-yard line. Kennedy is a quarterback who lined up as a split receiver that time. Well, this is a lateral. See how they're going to line up all three receivers to the bottom of the screen? And a lateral outside to Kennedy. Kennedy's going to look down the left side of the field and throw all the way back across to Holly. Great play. And Great call by Weather. Kennedy really sold that play, too. He took a couple of steps forward. Here's Holly on the keeper, and he's in. Touchdown, Navy. 80 yard drive in about three minutes. And the brigade is loving it. They're already doing 10 push-ups. They start to run it up. Uh, this could get uh, build muscles, not to mention character. The Mountaineers having a lot of trouble up front in the interior running game of Navy. We talked about Dingle, how this offense starts with the fullback. And once again, Hawley follows the fullback into the line. The entire brigade of midshipmen doing push-ups to commemorate that last touchdown. Well, they hate it when the academy runs it up. 
Those 50 to nothing games get painful. Drive for point is up and good, and that was a tremendous drive. And I'll tell you, yeah. Charlie Weatherby is just pulling every trick out of the bag. He's already gone onside kick, double pass, shovel pass. What next? The touchdown, Holly, just a quick fake into the middle and following his big fullback into the end zone. Weatherby has to be real excited about Holly's decision making. A new quarterback in this complicated Navy offense. Holly talking to the people upstairs, but he's starting to get a better feel. Making better decisions. Now that was impressive. Now Charlie Weatherby uh, is a guy, as we said, is just brimming with confidence. When we talked to him yesterday, when we talked to him yesterday, uh, he said, remember, I don't care what the spread of the game is, we'll win by more than that. You know what? He's prophetic. He's not only prophetic, he's pulling a lot of surprises. Yeah, I think that we go out and play like we're capable of playing. We can beat anybody we play on our schedule. And we talk about that every year when we go into a season. There wouldn't be a team on our schedule we scheduled if we didn't feel like we could go out and win a football game. Well, then they're playing like it. I mean, they're playing like the coach. And he's just one of those guys that, uh, you know, it's, if the, if the glass is half full with Charlie Weatherby. Papadakis will uh, kick this one off. Now, he went onside kick the first time. Brown and Porter, the deep men for West Virginia. And already the Mountaineers will receive a kickoff for the third time in this game. Papadakis lines this one toward Brown at the one-yard line. That's to the 10. And that's it to about the 17. Rashad Jones makes the stop. And all kinds of little skirmishes breaking out all around the field here. Speaking of the field, this is uh, one of the more beautiful playing surfaces that we've seen. We got on the field yesterday. We were talking to the extra junior coaches about it, and uh, they agreed. They just love this. I mean, it's like a putting green. Oh, it's wonderful. The grass is lush and finely manicured. Talked to Amos Zaraway yesterday and also Don Neal, and they said that we like playing on the grass a lot more than the artificial turf. And Don Neal was talking about how he thinks that's the reason they're nicked up on you. Yeah, Zaraway playing with a turf toe. He's not 100%, although you couldn't tell that from that first run that he made. And that's from uh, playing on that hard turf. They don't practice on it, but they play on it. Play fake, Bolger to throw, does so to Saunders. First down, short of the 30-yard line. Don Nealon, of course, uh, in his 18th year at West Virginia, has had great success. Now, when he plays on grass, though, they don't seem to get it done. They play on turf, they do get it done. But that's a little bit misleading in that their home field is artificial turf. Exactly. That's uh, pretty much what you have there is an away record for West Virginia. Don Nealon, incredibly successful in his 19 years at West Virginia. Played for the national championship back in 1988. Lost to Notre Dame down in the Fiesta Bowl. And his coaches have been together for a long time. Uh, he was talking about uh, just about 100 years combined experience together for the West Virginia coaching staff. And uh, the only time that we've seen any more than that is the Nebraska staff has, been, has 125 years together. But it just makes life so easy. The terminology is the same. The system stays the same. Everybody knows their role. Sideline warning against West Virginia. That's the first warning. Got a sideline warning. The next time, that will be a 15-yard penalty. So things going from bad to worse for Don Neal. Yeah, they're big on details here in Annapolis. If you're getting up a little bit close to the playing field, they'll warn the team to step back. Don't well, see that very often. West Virginia, proud football tradition. And this is a very good football team. Their only loss, of course, to Ohio State. And that uh, clearly falls into a category of forgivable loss. Here's Zeroway. Gets a little bit of a gap, but he is stuck. Jamie Doffelmeyer just stood him up. And we talked to defensive coordinator Dick Bumpus, and he said last week against Tulane, we played a little too conservative. To this week against West Virginia, we're going to put eight men in the box, we're going to use some numbers, and we're going to try to take Zeroway away from this West Virginia offense, make Mark Bulger throw the football. Well, so far, it's, uh, it's worked that way. Zeroway had a little bit of a gap that time, but Doppelmeyer just stood him up. Bulger to throw. Throws into double coverage, and it's almost intercepted by Mike Weedle. Well defended by Navy. Dangerous pass to throw. I would think Bulger would have better judgment than that. Well, it looked like he had Saunders for a second on the post corner there. That's just a great play by Weedle, the cornerback. 
Number six, David Saunders. For a minute, it looked like Bolger had him. If he can just put the ball out over the top, the ball's underthrown. And what an effort by number 29, Mike Weedle, playing that ball in the air. Mike Weedle defines what we talked about at the beginning of the show, not the size of the dog in the fight, but the fight in the dog. As Weedle is undersized, 22-year-old sophomore. Bolger throws a fly this time, and it is caught that time by Pat Green. Great catch. Again, it was well defended. Good ball by Bolger, though. And that's the problem with loading up on West Virginia's running game. If you put the game in Mark Bolger's hands at quarterback, he's going to hurt you. Sitting in the shotgun, and this is a perfect throw to the outside on the fade ball. The only place this ball can be completed is high and to the outside. And a pretty nice play by Green, bringing the ball down, working against Mike Weedle, the cornerback. And, and I don't think Weedle knew the ball was coming. He never really turned around for it. He might have had a chance at it. First down, West Virginia at the 45-yard line. Quick pass this time to Saunders. He's got a step at the 40, the 35, still at his feet and out of bounds. Flag down at the 31-yard line. And they're working Weedle. Yeah, they're working Weedle. They want to go after the 5'7 quarterback. He's got a lot of fight in him, as you mentioned, Barry. This might be a, be a blocking call on the outside against Foreman. That is going to be the call. Talking about the West Virginia receivers and their size, Saunders at 6'2", 205, Foreman at 6'1", 205. The man who caught the last ball, Green, 6'2", 190, and Corey Ivey at 6'2". This guy, Weedle, has a 41-inch vertical. So we were talking to the West Virginia coaches about the fact that Weedle may be undersized, but he's got a 41-inch vertical. He said the coaches from West Virginia said, well, guess what? Foreman, Saunders, Green, and Ivy also have 41-inch verticals, and they're 6'2". Now, Weedle is a quite a story. He's a sophomore. He's the oldest player on the team. Spent three years in the Marines before coming out to the Naval Academy. He's one of the great stories in college football this year. This time Green comes in motion, now turns around, comes the other way. Quick toss to Green, he hangs on at the 40, 35, 30, and steps out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. Same play as last time, only to the other side. And when you have big wide receivers, it not only helps you down the field, but it also helps you if you can split two wide receivers out. Here Green comes in motion, number 21 right here. But watch Bolger as he gets the ball back outside. Green's going to receive the pass and form, and number 16 is going to block on the outside. They're using their size. Look at Foreman working downfield. They're using their size to block downfield as well. Gain of 12, it'll be first down and 10. Bolger gives the zero away, and zero away caught from behind by Matt Daniel. Well, Fox Sports News Primetime's your source for college football news. Who do you think's making a run for the Heisman? What teams are going to move up in the rankings? Which contenders remain undefeated? We've got college football covered like nobody else. Fox Sports News Primetime. It's tonight after the games. Tell you what, the Navy defenders have been sure tacklers. They've been getting beat off the ball, but they're not missing that first tackle attempt. Second down 12, Bolger play fake, will throw wide open this time. Saunders makes the catch and steps out at 21, short of the first down. And they really are trying to work on Mike Weedle. They're identifying him and trying to play him hard. Well, they're not only working the matchup on the outside against Weedle, but West Virginia showing some patience here. You know, Don Nealon, I know what he's thinking over there on the sideline. He's saying, hey, if they're going to play eight men against our running game and they're going to take away Amos Zaraway, I'm just going to have Bolger throw the ball to the outside. And Bolger is good enough, believe me, to take advantage for the length of this afternoon. He's that good a player at quarterback. Right now they got to make a play, though. Third down and two. This is Zaraway, and he's going to get the two and more. 20, 15, and caught from behind as he tried to make that cut by Jamie Doffermeyer. Saved the touchdown. Now Wes Hours, the fullback, trying to seal on the block outside. Didn't get a great block. Really just aim a Zeroway and his speed getting to the corner. I mean, Zeroway has NFL written all over him. He's, he's become very kind of the prototype back in the NFL. A little bit smaller, powerful, hits the hole quickly, and has the ability to take it all the way to the yard. Strong upper body and a great cutback runner. And, and the exceptional thing about Zeroway is his vision. 
Here's Zeroway again. Left side again. He stopped just as he gets to the line of scrimmage on a good defensive play by the freshman, Barani Nettles. Interesting story, Nettles, David. Yeah, Nettles is a, is a great story. We talked about Weedle's story. Nettles out of South Central Los Angeles and didn't go to school for the first two years out of high school. His younger brother was paralyzed in a, in a gun accident, stayed at home to help his mom and worked as a drugstore clerk. Said he always had a feel for discipline, always wanted to come out to the Naval Academy. It's a great story. And just a freshman, he's going to be here four more years. Quick toss this time. Sanders can't hang on. Ball was in the air before Saunders turned around. Now, this is just a hitch route, and Sa Saunders going to work out, just hitch up there. Ball was thrown a little bit too far to the outside. When you throw a hitch, you want it to be an inside pack pocket catch, meaning don't lead the receiver up, receiver up the field. Saunders should have made that catch, but not a real well-placed ball by Bolton. So again, a big play for the Mountaineers. Third down and 13 trips right this time. Foreman, Ivy, and Saunders all to the right side and Green to the left side. Zero with the lone setback. No tight ends. Look out. Bolger wrapped up off the blitz. Matt Daniel drops him back at the 16. A 26, I beg your pardon. Well, Matt Daniel on the blitz right here, number 47. He's going to come right off the edge, and this is just a great play. Great speed, great closing ability. Gets a handful of jersey, and he's not going to let Bolger get away. Brian Pekinas and Brock Holland unable to block the blitzing linebacker, Matt Daniel, end of the first quarter, and what a quarter for the midshipmen of Navy. They lead it 10 to nothing. Mountaineers looking at a fourth down and a whole bunch when we come back. to Annapolis, Maryland. That's the United States Naval Academy. And uh, we talked about it earlier. We had a chance to walk around the facilities here yesterday. Absolutely beautiful, right on Chesapeake Bay and Severn River. And just one of the more beautiful campuses in America. Field goal try by Jay Taylor, a 43-yarder. He missed one from 28 a little while ago. Has enough on this if his direction is good. And it is. So the Mountaineers get on the board with a 43-yard field goal by Jay Taylor. First play of the second quarter, a first quarter that was pretty much dominated by the Navy, and they won't be unhappy with how this one turned out either. We're coming back. Just underway in the second period, Navy clinging to a 10 to three lead. It's been a long time since the Naval Academy has uh, managed to uh, beat a top 25 team all the way back to 1984, when they beat uh, then number two ranked South Carolina, 38 to 21. But I'll tell you what, they play up to the level of their competition, and they have been close in most of the games that they have played against ranked teams. They don't get blown away by anybody. Zach Anglin will uh, do the kicking here. A high kick, fairly short. Vereen at the nine-yard line. And Vereen stopped as he crosses the 20. Right now, let's go to our College Football Saturday studio, get an update with Kevin Frazier. Kevin? Barry Kansas and Texas A&M playing their first Big 12 game of the season for both teams. Dante Hall, an eight-yard touchdown. Texas A&M up, A up early. Let's go back to Annapolis. Well, an A&M in one of those situations where they should beat Kansas, but they got Nebraska coming up next. Can't do any of that looking by anybody business. So the Aggies up early on the Hawks. Jayhawks. Good ship and start at the 21-yard line. They've gone deep into their bag of tricks so far today. And a very good first quarter on both sides of the ball. Holly on the keep, and now the pitch to Wolf, and he's caught from behind by Damon Codlin. Mountaineers nothing if not quick defensively. And that's the way Navy wants to play this game. As you see, that is an important statistic for Navy, not as important as the, the scoreboard, but nonetheless, one that they will keep an eye on. Yeah, Charlie Weatherby, the head coach for Navy, said yesterday, time of possession is important, but scoring when we get down in the red zone is even more important. Matt Harden in the ball game now, the fullback spot. Second down, eight. It's like the old spinner series in the pitch to Vereen this time. Nothing doing. Stop for a loss. Back at the 20-yard line again by Cogdell. 
Yeah, the first and second down plays. Nice job by Coggle, number one, showing his great athletic ability and speed on this West Virginia defense. Even though they're missing three starters, Holly reversing out the pitch to Vereen. Two consecutive plays, nowhere to go, and Coggle on both plays making the play to the outside with great pursuit. You must be disciplined playing defense against the option. Trips left set this time. On third and long, Holly straight back to throw, steps up, throws underneath, too tall, intended for Vereen, and the Naval Academy will have to give it up, and Kevin Landau really gave Steve Holly a shot. And Holly playing in his first year, a quarterback at the college level, just a little half roll. Watch Landau on the right side of your screen, taking him down hard. And I can't help but think, Barry, that hand may be bothering Holly a little bit. If you have a hand injury, it'll tend to make the ball sail on you. And he threw that ball a little bit high. Maybe only punted one time last week in the loss to Tulane. They will be kicking to Antonio Brown. And Brown can scoot. They come after this one, and they almost got I think they did get a piece of it. This ball picked up by the short man. And getting it down to the 20-yard line was Perlo Bastide. If you, if you can imagine West Virginia unfortunate not to get a touchdown or to get the ball very close to the Navy goal line. Gary Tompkins at the top of the screen, number 11, and he should have a block right there. He fanned on that punt. And this is just a case of not getting it done, protecting the punter. Navy gets a net net of just one yard on that punt. A low snap didn't help. Uh, Gary Tompkins just missing. He overran that punt. He's got a lyric name, Gary Tompkins, don't you think? <laughs> Here's Zeraway, and Zeraway is just met before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Navy gang tackling him. Matt Daniel was the first man to him. Well, Zeraway had 35 yards the first time he touched the ball since then. Navy has shut him down. Uh, nice job up front by the Navy defensive front. They're led by Jason Snyder, the co-captain, number 97. And you get a look at big Jason Snyder, the vocal leader of that defense. And Navy doing a good job up front, shutting down Zeraway. They're using numbers, but this West Virginia offense, you pick your poison. It's only a matter of time before Bolger makes some plays in the passing game. Just then they deny the in motion. Bolger straight back, throws underneath for Ivy, and that's the play that West Virginia has gone to. This time it doesn't work, however. It's that quick toss and just try to get a speed matchup. Now we talked about Jason Snyder. Jason Snyder was a defensive lineman that interrupted the rhythm of that last passing play. Bolger on a few pass plays has been forced to get rid of the ball before he's wanted to. You see the experience of Jason Snyder? 97 career tackles. He is the anchor of the defensive line. See how he worked in a little naval turn there? <laughs> he's a lone returnee as a starter on this Navy defense. Only one returning starter off 1997. Double slot, they go out of the shotgun this time on third down 11. Belger running out of time. Down he goes, back at the 33-yard line, and that might have taken him out of field goal range. Daryl Hill led the blitz from Navy. Well, Daryl Hill's going to come off the edge. The sophomore from Jupiter, Florida. Great coverage downfield, set things up, and a nice job by Hill closing. Nettles was also there, number 95. Navy's harassed Bulger in the pocket. They're going to go on fourth down and a million. Fourth down and 21, and uh, we'll take a timeout. Charlie Weatherby saying, uh, just don't let them get behind you here. That's all they have to worry about with 11.49 remaining in the first half. And Navy clean to a seven-point lead. It's the Naval Academy 10. And the West Virginia Mountaineers, three Mountaineers looking at a fourth and a million when we come back. Presenting Body and Soul. Here and now. Lou 
Luther Vandross. I promise to love faithfully. Freddie Jackson. Get Body and Soul on two CDs or two cassettes. When I get that feeling, I want sexual healing. Then audition other great Body and Soul albums. Let me love you down. Call now to get Body and Soul. To order, call 1-800-699-8844 or send $17.99 for two cassettes or $19.99 for two CDs plus $3.95 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. team in this contest. You look at the two coaches, Don Nealon on the left of your screen, Charlie Weatherby on the right as West Virginia will apparently go here on fourth down and 21. And it was Navy that called that timeout. Charlie Weatherby wanted to talk to his defense, make sure they don't get behind you. I don't understand this, Barry. I don't understand. If you're not going to kick the field goal, why not just try to punt it down it inside the 10? I don't see the strategy here. Straight back, Baldwin. He throws a little hitch this time. Foreman. Foreman's got some room. Look out. And he's caught from behind as he got to the 22-yard line. He did have a little bit of room, but Navy ran him down from behind. Well, Don Nealon's thinking on that decision to go for it on fourth down. He didn't feel like Taylor had the leg to make it from 49 to 50 yards. Taylor had a lot of leg on his last field goal that he made, but Nealon didn't have the confidence, decided, hey, if I punt the ball out of the end zone, they still get the ball in the 20. Let's take a crack at it. I would have chose to just punt the ball and try to down it inside the 10. Still, Navy with the ball back, and this score is going to capture the attention of some fans across the country here pretty soon. Capture the attention of the fans here in Navy. I'll tell you that, the brigadier, or the, or the uh, brigade rather, is jacked up. Give on first down to Irv Dingle, the fullback, and he got about four, maybe five yards on the play. And a spread option offense puts a lot of pressure on the opposing offense. If, if West Virginia doesn't come up with a score, doesn't move the ball effectively, then you're looking at not getting the ball back for four, five, six, maybe even seven minutes. Well, Charlie Weatherby told us he's satisfied with three yards on first down. He got five on that play. You can see Navy uh, out offensing West Virginia so far. This time they bring Wolf in motion. Now, Holly's going to call the timeout. One thing the Navy has done, too, they have managed to contain Amos Zeraway. 35 yards on his first carry, but on his other seven carries, only six yards. Yeah, we talked to Charlie Weatherby yesterday, and he said, we are not going to let Zeraway take control of this game. If they beat us with the passing game, we can stomach that. But we're not going to let Zeraway come into our backyard and run rampant. And he has not so far. Charlie Weatherby has things going here at the Naval Academy, and that can be said about a lot of the academies, actually. Army last year was pretty good, too. The Air Force has been very consistent, and uh, they've had winning seasons, as you see, the last two years, and it took uh, a long time. It took 16 years for them to get back to that back-to-back uh, -back winning season. Yeah, two years ago, the 9-3 and three record, Charlie Weatherby and the midshipmen rolled into the Aloha Bowl, upset Cal. And they rewarded him with a 10-year contract extension, Barry. That's 10-year contract extensions in college football. That's unheard of. Isn't that what your deal is? <laughs> On the other side of the uh, field, Don Nealon, of course, uh, amongst the elite five in uh, career wins in college coaching. Joe Paterno, of course, uh, up atop the heap at 301. Today's is going to be a little bit difficult for him as... Uh, they play Ohio State. That game was uh, scoreless early on. I'm sure Kevin Frazier will fill you in on everything that's happening in that one. Give the fullback on the dive this time, and that is Irv Dingle, and he gets about three more. It'll be third down at about a yard. Right now, the Navy line is getting off the ball and getting a little bit of push on the Mountaineers. Yeah, they are. They're playing very well up front. I mentioned earlier they're getting the front four block, and that's a talented front four up front for West Virginia. Guys like Thurston and Thornton, Kevin Landolt. And Holly's making some solid decisions at quarterback, too. You know, you, you have to decide whether you're going to give the ball to the fullback or pull it out and head down the line on the option. Third down and short now. This time Holly on the keeper, and he's going to be close. This will depend on the spot. Now, if where the linesman is right now uh, is where they're going to indeed mark the ball, then it's going to be enough for first down, but we'll see. Gonna get a measurement. This is gonna be pretty close. I feel that it may be inches short. Well, Navy's offense is playing 
football their way. They're looking at a lot of third and one and third and two situations, and that's what you want to see as an option team. And Charlie Weatherby came into this game, Barry, said, I do not want to be looking at third and 10, third and 12, and it's gone according to plan so far. Incidentally, just to uh, keep you up to date, that is going to be a first down for Navy by inches. Keep you up to date, the game we were talking about earlier, Penn State and Ohio State, the Nittany Lions, and uh, Joe Pa's team uh, off to a 3 nothing lead the second quarter. That's impressive. Very impressive. And, you know, West Virginia played Ohio State in their opener, and they were not embarrassed by Ohio State in that one. 34-17 win for the Buckeyes, but uh, West Virginia proved in the opener against Ohio State they could play with anybody. They said the Ohio State secondary, the coaches of West Virginia, that is, said the Ohio State secondary is uh, the best they'd ever seen in college football. That's high praise. First down for the Naval Academy. Holly going to throw on first down. Wide open is Wolf. That's the catch the 42. He's the 30. He's the 20. He's the 15, the 10, and right out of the seven yard line. They don't pass often, but they do pass effectively. The defensive coordinator for West Virginia, Steve Dunlap, he pulled me aside yesterday and he said, David, what really worries me about Navy is the play action pass. And Navy springs it on West Virginia. Porter trailing. Jason Wolf, the slot back, right down the gut. The ball is well delivered. In fact, if Holly gets a little bit more on that ball, Wolf scores. As it is, they've got it at the seven yard line, and we're going to get a timeout called by West Virginia just to gather themselves. I mean, the midshipmen have just not gotten off the gas on both sides of the ball, and they're playing excellent football. Well, that's a tough thing about going up against this Navy offense. You're dealing with deception, you're making adjustments, you're trying to attack that running game, and pretty soon you start getting the free safety and the strong safety involved. Once you get those safeties involved, it's it becomes dangerous because Navy has the ability to slip a slot back or a wide receiver down the field, and all of a sudden you have a receiver running wide open. That's what happened on the big play from Hawley to Wolf. Well, we told you that Charlie Weatherby was a confident coach, and he really makes his players believers. We talked to him yesterday about how exactly he was going to try to get the job done against West Virginia, and he flat out told us. We've got to be able to take care of the football, and we've got to score once we get at, down in the red zone. We've got to rename that red zone the blue zone and get down inside the 20-yard line. We've got to put it in the, in the end zone. You've got to try to create some turnovers on the defensive side of the ball. You've got to create a little havoc over there. On offense, you've got to score every opportunity you get. We can't give the ball away to them. We cannot afford to turn the football over against a good football team. That's been the problem for Navy. I mean, they have turned it over this year, unlike last year when they in the giveaway takeaway, they were amongst the nation's elite. But he's sticking to the blueprint. They haven't come up with a turnover yet, but the recovery on the onside kick to open up the game was as good as a turnover. That was big. Got the crowd right into it. First down at the seven-yard line. Give it the fullback dingle. Nothing doing. Kevin Lando makes the stop for West Virginia, and Dingle not going anywhere from the get-go that time. You know, and that's a good point, Barry. It was so important for Navy to have a good start in this game. They've got the whole brigade here, 4,000 Naval Academy guys just hanging out in the stands, giving their support, standing up the whole game. And this big crowd, one of the biggest crowds in Navy history, very important to get off to a good start, and they have. They stack the receivers again to the right side. Very difficult to defend that. Holly on the pitch to Dingle. Trying to get outside. Can't do it. He's run down by Barrett Green. That's a big time play by a big time player. Now that time they got all the flow going in one direction and they came weak side. Yeah, this is just great speed. An option, Holly coming to the outside, option off Thurston. And look at the speed, Barrett Green. And we talked about Zeroway being the prototype runner. This is the new kind of defensive player in the NFL. Smaller, explosive, a hitter, great speed. He's got about a 10, 12 year career ahead of him in the NFL. This time they put Metcalf in the slot. Three wide receivers. They give it to Dingle. Dingle at the five. He's in. Touchdown, baby. I'll tell you 
what, that was a brilliantly executed play. You talk about getting a full going one way and then coming back the other way with a fullback. And there are the mids again doing push-ups out on the field. Holly reads it inside, sees the gap, and decides, hey, I'm just going to leave the ball with Dingle. I think it was Costas Hatsidakis who gave him a big block. Try for point is up and good, and the midshipmen lead it by 14. It's Navy 17, and West Virginia 3, and a lot of time to go. 9.06 remaining first half. It has been all midshipmen on both sides of the football. All right, thanks, Kevin, and I'm uh, starting to set a tone maybe for the day here as Navy now looking like the real deal. They lead West Virginia by 14, and you got to say as much about Navy's defense as you do their offense. That's the offensive line sitting on the bench uh, getting a little bit of uh, what certainly can't be much more than pep talk, I would think, at this point. Do what you're doing, guys. Here's the kick, a short kick to Brown at the 10-yard line. Brown starts back running laterally, missed by the first man, gets the 15. Tries to cut back and is stopped as he gets the 24. The ball is on the floor, and uh, they're not going to call ahead of fumble. And you might have been able to make a case for that. On the touchdown, the key block is here by Terrence Anderson. Watch the block up inside, giving a nice big slot for Dingle. Just cutting his man, and Dingle, a nice job of just taking the ball into the end zone. And watch Barrett Green. He's a potential All-American, and he just gets flattened by J.D. Ganey. Great job up front by the Navy offensive line on that touchdown play. Yeah, that's exactly the way you draw it up right there. That was a super block by the center. So the Mountaineers start at the 24-yard line. The quick hitch pass drop by Sanders. Zeroway, since that first run of 35 yards, has been invisible. Nine rushing plays, five yards for West Virginia after the 35-yard run by Zeroway, and that was really off a broken play. Play fake this time, Bolger will throw, throws to Saunders. Saunders gets by the first man, 35-40, to about the 45-yard line. Yeah, that's the problem, Barry. You're playing man-to-man -man on the outside, and you leave these smaller corners alone against big, talented receivers, and not only coverage becomes a problem, but tackling after the catch. Just a hitch route, actually a quick out route to the outside to Saunders, and number three, Enrico Hunter. Not a good job at closing and making the tackle on the perimeter. Three wide outs this time. They go to the slot right, zero with a lone setback. First down at the 45-yard line. Play fake again, they'll throw, and it's batted down. Where Ronnie Nels Nettles rather, makes the hit, knocks it down. And he's played big for a first-year freshman. First-year freshmen do not get a big chance here at the Naval Academy. No, it's amazing. I mean, the freshmen aren't even involved in the... Let's look at him at the bottom of the screen. Nettles here, they're not even involved in the press guide because sometimes they don't make it through the plea in summer. You see Nettles getting up high, knocking that ball down. Coming into fall camp, Weatherby said, hey, all the quarterbacks knew where he was lined up. Well, I have an idea he's going to be lined up there for the rest of the year. This is his first start. Here's Zeroway, and Zeroway trying to leap over somebody, and first man once again gets it. Well, Navy plays a defense with five secondary players, five defensive backs. They play a strong safety on each side. They leave those corners on an island, and it gives both safeties the ability to come up and get involved in the run game. I think what really impresses me about the, what is now has to be considered a potential upset is what Navy is doing defensively. They are able to contain one of the most powerful offenses in America thus far. Third down and eight. Saunders comes in motion. Bulger to throw. Throws four Saunders, make, or rather four uh, Ivy makes the catch, and Weedle knocks him out of bounds, but it'll be a Mountaineer first down. And again, they continue to test Weedle. It was Sean Foreman on the receiving end of that. And not bad coverage by Weedle there. Just great execution, and Ivy on an out route. That's, that's a thing that Bulger gives you. He gives you, actually it was Foreman on the outside, but Bulger gives you the ability to hit the out regularly. And when you talk to scouts at the NFL level, 
They look for quarterbacks that can hit that ball 10 out of 10 times. So the Mountaineers, the first down at the 44-yard line of the midship. This is Zaraway. And Zaraway cuts it to the outside that time, but again is run down by Gary Lane. And the midshipmen continue to do a good job of identifying where Zaraway is, and maybe more importantly, go, where he's going. Let's go, let's go. Navy doing a nice job of not getting frustrated. They've done a heck of a job against Zaraway. 35 yards, only 12 yards on the last six carries. The Navy's not going to get frustrated. They're going to allow Bolger to hit some balls to Foreman and to Saunders on the outside. They just want to make sure that Zeroway doesn't get loose in the second one. All right, you stop the marquee player, and that is the bottom line for them. If they're going to beat you, let them beat you through on the football. Play fake, they do throw the football. It's caught by Saunders, steps out of bounds with another West Virginia first down. You know, it's hardcore football on Fox Sports Net. Ronnie Lott, Bill Moss, and Ron Pitts will bring you turf talk from the toughest guys in the NFL. Hardcore X's and O's. Hardcore blood, sweat, tears. Hardcore football. You know who it's for? For the hardcore fan. Hardcore football. Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports. <laughs> Two defensive backs. They're all laughing up here, David. I don't know. Two defensive backs and an offensive line. <laughs> That's right. They start holds in motion. Play fake, and Bolger will throw again, looking for it all this time. Under through Ivy, but Ivy comes back, makes the catch at the 12-yard line. Actually, Amico Hunter had it covered. Bolger under through the ball, and Ivy was able to come back and make a catch. Now, Ivy had Enrico Hunter beat on the post route, and that was not a well-thrown ball. You're right, Barry, but it was well enough thrown that Ivy could go up and make the catch. This receiving core for West Virginia is so talented. They have four guys on the outside that can go up and make a play for you. Bulger a little bit late getting this ball up. Ball's underthrown, but Ivy, nice job of going up and protecting the ball with his body. This time they start decked in motion. Here's a pitch to Zeroway. Zeroway trying to cut back, and he cut right into the pursuit of Navy. Still managed to pick up about four yards. Daryl Hill, first man to him. Now we mentioned the two safeties that Navy plays in their defensive structure of a weak safety and a strong safety and they've done a great job Barry Wilkins and and also uh, Creshawn in this game of keeping the runs and the cutbacks back up inside they're making Zaraway take the ball back to the middle where there's help from the Navy defense Eric DeGroo has uh, come off with an equipment problem for West Virginia. He's the center, of course, and that's always a, a big thing. And now we're going to get a timeout. West Virginia. West Virginia will call a timeout. That is its second timeout. Don Nealon will uh, talk it over. I still don't think DeGroo is going to be able to come back in the ballgame, even though he just needed a, a shoe repair. Next on College Football Saturday, uh, Southern Miss uh, with uh, maybe or maybe not will have to face Sean King. He's got a broken wrist. He might or might not play for too late. But Tulane, remember, undefeated, playing very well, beat this Navy team last week. Number two, Nebraska will visit their big 12 fold Oklahoma State. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern, and that'll be followed by a great game out in the pack. Arizona going up to Seattle to battle with number 20, Washington. Look out. I think the Cats might do some damage up there. That's really a featured game on the West Coast, and a lot of people think Arizona's going to give Washington all they can handle up at the dog pound. Chesapeake Bay, uh, really one of the, yeah, very similar. <laughs> Our director, Mike Iowa, pointing out that was a little bit like Washington. Uh, but Husky Stadium, of course, right on Lake Washington. The only difference is you can't pull boats right up to the stadium here in Annapolis. But uh, Barry talked a little bit about Sean King, the quarterback for Tulane, who had such a big week last week against Navy. The coaches that I've talked to say he might have the quickest release and strongest arm in college football. So it'll be second down and six for West Virginia. They bring Saunders in motion. This is Zaraway, or rather a play fake, and Bolger throws to tight end. Beck, touchdown, Mountaineer. Great play fake by Bolger. Fool me and fool Navy. And just like that, the Mountaineers are back with the conversion within seven. And when a defense has their attention taken with a great back, 
It sets things up for the play action fake, and that's what happened with Mark Bolger on that last play. Well, if football, David, is indeed a game of matchups, and, and it is very much like basketball, there's a very tough matchup for Navy's defense where their corners try to play against the bigger wide receivers, bigger and faster wide receivers of West Virginia, and that's what uh, Bulger, Don Nealon, and his team took advantage of on that drive, and I'm not sure what Navy can do about it short of getting a good push on Bulger. And the secret to this play is the play fake. Watch Bulger sell the run. That's a good fake. He sticks the ball in the belly of Amos Airway. And watch Beck at the left side of your screen. He's going to escape. He gets rid of Wimsat, the defensive end. Bulger gives him a nice ball. And Beck stretches the ball into the end zone. Beck dropped it as he crossed the goal line, too. Nonetheless, it is a touchdown, and just like that, it's a 17-10 ball game. 10 plays, 76 yards. Didn't take very long. West Virginia could do that to you. It was all on the arm of Mark Bolger. You know, I hate to beat a dead horse, but Bolger is a guy who's going to have to carry his team in this game. They got an upset look in West Virginia square in the face, and Bolger knows he's going to have to hit balls to the outside because Navy, the Navy defense is doing everything they can to take away the running game. Well, Charlie Weatherby, though, uh, may be looking at a matchup that could just be too tough. Now, I should point out, too, remember, Tulsa last week with a very different kind of offense was ahead of West Virginia with one minute to play in the first half, and West Virginia went on to pounce on Tulsa. Kickoff is a high, relatively short kick to Vereen at the five-yard line. Right up the middle, the 25, close to the 30. David Carter makes the tackle on special teams for West Virginia. There's Amos Zeroway, and uh, he had a 35-yarder the first time he touched the ball, and since then uh, has not been able to do a lot of business, but his team has. Yeah, he doesn't have big numbers, but it's the threat of Zeroway that's making things work for West Virginia elsewhere in their offense. Well, and he's also one of those backs that you might be able to stop him 25, 26 times, but it's that 27th time that he's going to get you. I think it is imperative now for Navy to uh, stay on the gas offensively. Give this time off the slot to Metcalf, and Metcalf gets to the 38, and a flag is down. That may be a face mask. Uh, that's nice counteraction by Metcalf. The Navy's, Navy's going to fake the run to the left side, and then the counteraction back to the right. Metcalf right here, and he's going to just have counteraction back to the bottom of the screen. Nice faking by Hawley. He's really showing me a lot of confidence in running the team from the line of scrimmage. You see, that gets West Virginia flow up front, headed to the right side, and then they bust the counter on you. Nice pickup for Metcalf, and also a face masking call on Jerry Porter, the free safety, so they tack on five yards. Give credit to Doug Howard for a nice block on the right side to spring Metcalf, too. First down at the 44-yard line. And Holly's going to go up. Looking down the middle, and it's intercepted by Gary Tompkins. And that time, Holly would love to have that ball back. He threw it right to Tompkins. Not a good decision. Not a good decision. He's going to look for Metcalf as slot back. And as a quarterback, you've got to keep track of the center fielder. The play action fake. Holly's going to drop back. Now watch number 11. He's going to get great depth as a strong safety. And Hawley knows the minute he throws that ball, he's turned it over. I'm not sure Metcalf ever made his cut. Well, Metcalf was just on a seam route down the middle of the field, Barry. He was running the proper route. It's just Hawley failed to keep track of Tompkins. And Tompkins a great job of not getting deep, deep and getting back in a hurry. So West Virginia gets it back. There's looking Gary Tompkins. No relation, I might add. Swing to zero way out of the backfield. Cuts back at the 25 to the 30 yard line. Barry Tompkins, David Norrie. We are at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium here in Annapolis. A beautiful fall day, a little bit windy, but uh, just a great place to watch a college football game. And we're watching a pretty good one. Navy jumping out quickly to a 14 point lead. West Virginia scored in its last possession. Gets a pick and with 421 remaining in the first half. Is in a pretty good situation right now to try to take it in at least tied at the half. Ball at the 30-yard line, second down at six. Play fake, Bolger to throw again, close to green, wide open on a slant, midfield. 
still on his feet, fighting at the 44-yard line. That was nearly a home run play. Mike Weedle hanging on for dear life. Now this is a nice job by Bolger throwing the ball on time. Let's watch up at the top of the screen. Green's going to run the skinny post. We've seen the Dallas Cowboys run this play for a long time. Great success between Aikman and Irvin. And there it is again. The timing is the key. Bolger hits the five step, lets it go to the inside. Perfectly thrown ball and a nice route by Green. They got a guy uncovered here right now, unless Navy gets somebody over. The guy in the slot, who I think is Saunders, totally uncovered. Now they get a safety over on him. It was Ivy, that was the man, and he dropped the ball. May as well leave him uncovered, huh? <laughs> well, you, you've got good eyes, Barry, because that's exactly what Bolger saw on the last play. He comes up to the line of scrimmage. If they're not going to cover the slot, man, Bolger's going to check. He's going to raise up. He's going to get the ball out quickly to the outside. The only problem, Ivy forgot to catch the football. They've had a few drops today. Second out of ten. Ball just short of the 42-yard line. Then Foreman comes to the near side, Saunders to the far side, Powers, the fullback, lines up on the wing. Short drop, and there's that fade, and it is caught by Ivy at the 10, the 5, touchdown! And again, they beat Mike Weedle, and they're just having him for lunch. Well, it is so difficult for a cornerback to line up man-to-man -man against a talented wide receiver play after play. And Weedle, number 29, the quarterback for Navy, is getting no relief on the outside. Perfectly thrown ball and a great catch and run by Ivy. Well, we talked about what a tough matchup that is for Navy. And uh, short of growing a few inches, I'm not sure if there's anything they can do about it. So Bulger sticks that one off a three-step drop and a perfectly thrown ball. Good catch by Ivy. Yeah, let's watch here on the top of the screen. It's just going to be a fade route to the outside, and Bulger's going to walk, walk back three steps, get the ball up early, thrown to the outside, and Ivy, that's a beautiful catch. I mean, Weedle's all over him there. Weedle just doesn't get his eyes back to the quarterback. Bolger's a battle-tested quarterback as well. You know, he opened up the season against Ohio State. There's Gary Tompkins, a big turnover to get the ball back to West Virginia. But Bolger had great numbers against Ohio State and a couple touchdown passes in the open. Come on, man. Love y'all. Corey Ivey with the catch. Corey Ivey's the guy who stepped into the breach last year when Saunders got hurt. He became a starter and did very well. Saunders is back now, and uh, Ivey has to be content with being the third receiver. But on that particular play, he was number one. Mark Bolger, the junior quarterback, will be back next year. This uh, West Virginia team, while it is a team of the present, to be sure, it may be even better in the future, despite the fact that it's likely that Zeraway will come out this year. Marine, about three yards deep, will not come out. Right now, American Century Mutual Funds presents the play of the century. Do you remember it? Thanksgiving Day, 1971, first quarter. Top-ranked Nebraska against number two, Oklahoma. The Oscars, Johnny Rogers, on the punt return. Has trouble catching it. Now he keeps his feet. He cuts it back. He's gone. 72 yards. That was the first score of the game. Nebraska fell behind later, but they came back and beat the Sooners 35-31 to 31 in the, quote, game of the century. Rogers that year went on to win the Heisman Trophy. Holly checking off here, first down at the 20-yard line. Now the owner's really going on the Navy offense here. They need first downs. Here's Holly on the pitch this time to Metcalf, and Metcalf, though he's surrounded, managed to cut it back and get something out of nothing. Cut got about seven yards out of nothing. Barrett Green and Kevin Landold on the tackle, and Metcalf comes out limping. Well, we talked about Heisman Trophy winners. They got a few of them here at the Naval Academy. Remember that guy? Yeah, I remember him well. 1963, and a lot of people don't remember this. He won the Heisman as a junior at Navy, undefeated season. Went on to do some even bigger things at the pro level, MVP of a Super Bowl, Roger the Dodger. Pretty special player, Roger Staubach. Also played varsity basketball here at Navy. That's a little known fact. Dingle straight ahead with the first down to about the 34-yard line. 
Yeah, that turnover on the last possession. Steve Hawley, the quarterback for Navy, doing a great job up until that point. And talking to Weatherby, Barry, before this football game, he said, hey, we have to play a near-perfect game. We can't turn the ball over. Hawley turns the ball over. West Virginia comes right down the field and cashes it in for six. Dre Brittingham, another uh, true freshman in the ball game for the Naval Academy at uh, one of the slot back spots. Here's Holly, pitch to Brittingham. Brittingham gets outside of the 40, 45, midfield out of bounds. Showing some quicks. Gary Tompkins runs him out. And the key really is the fake. The fake by Holly. Now he's reading the defensive lineman. He's going to pull out, fake the ball to Dingle up inside, watch him attack Thurston there, and then a good job of dishing the ball to the outside. Brittingham has plenty of room, a nice little burst of speed. And is very impressed by Hawley operating the spread option offense. Another good block by Jason Wolf too, to spring that run. So the ball just short of midfield. This time, Holly on the keep, 45-40, well executed at the 32-yard line. Gain of 19. David Lightcap makes the stop. Well, West Virginia wasn't going to make the same mistake again, and Holly just tucked it away. Well, Steve Hawley's going to open up to the right side. He's going to come down the line on the option and watch Thurston here. If he freezes and he plays soft and he goes to the outside, then Hawley's just going to turn the ball up inside. The fake. Now, the defensive end is playing you soft. you got to fake the pitch, get it back up to the inside. Wonderful job by Hall. Then the other thing I just love about the option is the fact that, generally speaking, the two best defenders on the defense don't get blocked. You don't have to worry about it. Pitch this time to Vereen. He's got room at the 30, at the 25. First down, Navy at the 19-yard line. And Navy continues to move the ball on the offense. They've taken the fullback away. Now they're going outside. Coming up at halftime, we're going to take you back to the College Football Saturday Studios. Kevin Fraser and Kellen Winslow. Of course, that big game, Ohio State and Penn State. And the Nittany Lions doing a pretty good job early. They'll bring you up to date. They'll have all the scores and all the highlights on the Marriott Halftime Report. That's about a minute and 58 seconds of playing time away. Holly continuing to get the ball outside. Wonderful job by Manny Metcalf, the slot back blocking downfield. Harden is the fullback now. This is Harden. Harden slips a tackle. He gets down to about the 11-yard line. Harden with a bit of a legacy here at Navy. His dad was a captain of the 1974 Navy team. I'm sure watching the ball game, if not here, back in Concord, California. You got to respect the game plan by Navy, by the Navy offense. They're getting the ball into a lot of people's hands. Metcalf, Vereen, Wolf, Brittingham. Dingle, they're all getting carries. They mark it at the 12. It'll be second down and a long three. Long count this time by Holly. Holly on the pitch this time to Wolf. Wolf for the first down inside the 10 yard line at about the seven. Gary Tompkins runs him out again, but great execution by Navy. And the key there, Chris Edmonds, number 41. The outside linebacker for West Virginia got caught inside. And Wolf flashed a little speed to the outside. You know, Barry, the heart and soul of a team is the offensive line. You cannot win with an average offensive line. And this Navy group up front has really impressed me. They have really done a good job of coming off against a talented front four for West Virginia, and they have established the line of scrimmage. And you see that Navy doesn't have any timeouts remaining here. 59 seconds left. That's a lot of time, actually. First down and goal, the ball inside the eight-yard line. This time, Holly on the keep and is knocked forward by Chris Edmonds inside the five. <laughs> Edmonds on the last play, he got caught inside. He came down hard inside on this play on the hit against Hall. I'll tell you what, now they got to work the clock and they got to hurry. I don't think they can really afford to dally in the huddle too much. Now, with a timeout left and a second down here, I think Navy's going to have time. Take that back, they're out of timeout, so they do have to hurry a little bit there. They give it to the fullback, Harden, and he is stopped just short of the goal line on an excellent tackle by Dave Lightcap. Now they got 20 seconds left. They've got to hustle here. They have no timeouts. 
Clock is ticking down. They're still on piling players. And Hawley's going to throw the ball to the turf. A sure a field goal attempt here just before the end of the half. Except that that's going to only give them one play. But that is what they're going to do. Now they're going to kick it. They're going to take the three here. And I, I don't think that was the most proficient use of the clock. I think Charlie Weatherby would have rather seen a little bit better use of the clock. And I think where the problem happened was where we first started talking about it at about 51 seconds. No, that's right. And this is not a passing offense as well. But what you like to do on second down is throw the pass into the end zone. So you get a stoppage of the clock on the incomplete or a touchdown. And instead, they had to waste a play, but they still get the field goal attempt. You wouldn't take a fake here, would you? Not in this ball game. And it's blocked. And picked up, and this could go the other way. But dragged down from behind was Scooter Davis. So once again, uh, the midshipmen come up empty, and I truly believe this is a ball game that they cannot afford to come up empty like that too much, because I believe that West Virginia has found a matchup that Navy can't handle, and that is going to those big wideouts against the smaller defensive backs of the Naval Academy. But a well-played first half for Navy. They're right in this ball game. What an upset this would be if they can hold on. And those are the operable words, if they can hold on. Watch this block coming right through. I believe... Uh, well, and before we say, let's make sure we know who it is. Uh, is Lambert or Thurston? One of the two. We're not quite sure which one. But right now, as we uh, come to the end of the first half in a tie game at 17, let's go back. To Welcome back to Annapolis. Tie football game at the half. Navy in West Virginia. And the Mountaineers needed a late rush to do it. Barry Tompkins with David Norrie. And Navy got out of the blocks very quickly. Charlie Weatherby going deep into the bag of tricks. And he did so, David, right from the get-go. That was important for Navy to get a good start. Get this big crowd behind them. And right at the top, Evan Papadakis, the onside kick. And he recovers it himself. Navy in business to start this football game. And then Navy catches in on their first touchdown. Holly, the fake, the keep. The Navy takes an early lead. Big play in the first half. Hawley opening up on the option to the left side. The seam route down the middle of the field to Jason Wolf. Wolf almost scores. Puts Navy in business deep in West Virginia territory. And then the big fullback, Irv Dingle, finishing off the drive. A powerful run right up the gut. And Navy takes a two-touchdown lead. And the pressure really on Steve Hawley, I think, now to try to keep this offense on the scoreboard because uh, defensively, Navy has not had an answer for the big wide receivers of West Virginia. Now, the Navy will get the ball first. Zach Englund kicks it off high, kick. And this is Vereen about two yards deep. He'll try it. Gets the 10 to the 15, and that's it. So Navy will start deep in its own territory. And we'll see what Charlie Weatherby has in the bag to start the second half. KC Schiller makes the tackle, and uh, that one was probably better left. Take a look at the numbers after the first 30 minutes of play. Navy running it up and down the field with 15 first downs and a rushing guard. It's huge for Navy as they have managed to contain Amos Zeraway with 225 passing guards for West Virginia. They don't get you one way, they'll get you another. Give on first down to Dingle, the fullback, and he gets about three to the 19-yard line. And as we said earlier, that's just fine with Charlie Weatherby. Give him three yards on first down, he's happy. Barrett Green and John Thornton on the tackle. Well, Weatherby talked about playing a perfect game offensively if Navy was going to have a shot to win this game. And his quarterback, Holly, played almost perfectly in the first half. The turnover, the interception down the middle of the field, really a momentum turn. Yeah, biggest play of the half, in my opinion. Give again, Dingle the fullback, the Corrado on the keep this time, and a flag comes in late. Holly that time with the first down of the 31-yard line, but now let's see. And I think this may go against, this, against West Virginia. It is another face mask against West Virginia. And it's not a minor face mask either, a 15-yarder, and Holly showing a nice little flash of speed off the fake to the fullback. Nice fake up inside, and... Tell you what, Barry, he has deceptive speed. Well, like you said earlier, he's faster than Chris McCoy, the quarterback, last year. Yeah, the coaches talk about Steve Hawley. They say, hey, he's faster than Chris McCoy, but he's not a better runner. And that's not hard to understand. It talked about McCoy being one of the most prodigious runners at the quarterback position in the history of college football. Had eyes in the back of the head. Head 
the Navy coaches told us yesterday. Yeah, great vision. That was the key to him. Here's Dingle trying to hit into the open at the 40, 35, 30. He's at the 20, to the 10, and down to the six-yard line. Scooter Davis had to live up to his name to catch her Dingle. So we talked about Amos Zaraway getting bottled up and eventually he's going to hurt you with a big run. How about the fullback Irv Dingle? He's not only powerful, he has great speed. And I mean, this is a north-south run. He gets the ball straight up the field. Looks like he's going to score. Gary Tompkins, the strong safety, battling him from one side. And he's run down by Scooter Davis, the cornerback. So the Navy right back where it ended the first half at the seven yard line. This time Holly Worley to his right. He'll keep, cuts back to the five. He's in. Touchdown, Navy. Just like that. And the brigade hits the push ups. Starting to add up, 23 of them now. That could not have been scripted any better to start the second half for the Naval Academy. Try for point is up and good, and it is a seven point Navy lead, and it only took them a minute and 27 seconds to get the job done. Dingle, two carries, 49 yards, and Holly, the touchdown run. Navy back in front. Well, there's the man of the moment, Steve Holly, who takes it in for the score, his second touchdown, and his team leads it by seven. Take another look at it, and this, again, is just great execution, David. Two great blocks. Watch the slot back Wolf get the first block here as Holly opens up to the right side. The cut block, and then freeze it right here. The fullback, Matt Harden, is going to come out and get a solid block, and that's going to give Holly the room to sneak the ball up inside. He just slips it inside. Breaks a tackle, well executed, and two very good blocks for Hawley by his running backs. This is a well-coached football team. There's no question about that. Shoopsta kicks it off. A high kick to the six-yard line, Brown. Brown at the 20. Slips a man, gets to the 30. Good run back off a high kickoff. Brian Bourgeois makes the stop. Yeah, but a great drive by Navy coming down. They missed the field goal. Actually have a field goal attempt blocked right at the end of the first half, Barry. That took a lot of fortitude to load up at halftime, come out and march right down the field. A couple of great runs by Holly, sandwiched around a run by Dingle that really was the play of the drive. Changed the momentum of the game, I think, because I think your point is well taken. The interception by Tompkins at the end of the first half, or near the end of the first half, really seemed to change things toward West Virginia. And they put points on the board in a hurry to tie the game. And now Navy turns it around after the, after the second half kickoff. Bolger rolls to his right, throws again. The catch is made. And the one thing is Navy just does not have an answer for the receivers of West Virginia. That was caught by Sean Foreman. Here's the two plays I think really turned the tide in the second half. A 17-10 lead for Navy at this point. Navy driving. Holly just not keeping track of Gary Tompkins down the middle. And then the block on the field goal attempt just before the half. That's so critical. You cannot come away without three points on a chip shot going into your locker room. Yeah, 14-point swing there as West Virginia takes it in. Of course, they stop Navy going the other way. And uh, Navy, though, coming right back, showing that fortitude you spoke of. Leads by seven. Just under 13 minutes remaining third quarter. West Virginia's first possession of the second half here is zero away. Steps to the outside. And is hauled down from behind as he crosses midfield by Mike Weedle. And a flag comes down late. And now we'll see about the penalty. Face mask and a big one against Navy, so that's going to add 15 to that. Yeah, that's a big, big call, and that's going to put West Virginia in Navy territory. There's a face mask at the end of the play. It's like Mike Weedle, the cornerback. And on that last play, Barry, we got a great look at the cutting ability of Amos Zaraway. I mean, it just jumps right at you. He just took the ball on a blast play off the right side of the center and the cut to the outside. Take a quick look here. 
the blast, and look at that cut. I mean, he has some of the lateral ability that you see from a Barry Sanders. He's a little bit more of a north-south runner, but he can go laterally on you in a hurry. He lines up as a lone setback now. First down, the ball up the 34-yard line. Bulger going to go up off the play fake, looking for it all. He's got four men who can't hang on at the goal line. And once again, West Virginia just testing Weedle virtually every passing down. Now they're testing Weedle, but I'll tell you what, Weedle has been up to the task at times. He's been hurt. He's playing man-to-man. -man. Another good sell by Bulger. Seven-step drop this time. Good mechanics. A nice release. He gives Foreman a chance to make that catch. But Weedle there, step for step. I love the way this kid battles. And he's only 5'7", about 180 pounds. Second down and 10 now. Ball at the 34-yard line. Howards goes in motion. This is Zaraway outside. Cuts back inside. And stopped from behind as he nears the 30-yard line. Jason Snyder on the stop. They'll give him three. You know, what West Virginia is starting to do offensively is they're starting to take some pressure off Zaraway by throwing the ball on first and second down. The Navy's keen on the run, and when a defense is keen on the run, they're really going to play tough against the run on the obvious running downs. It's first and second down. So what does West Virginia do? They're play actioning, and they're getting Bulger some attempts early in a possession. So it'll be third down and seven now. Big play for the Mountaineers. Bulger will throw. Does so for Foreman. Bad pass. That will be fourth down. And again, now the Mountaineers with a decision. Now the last time in this situation they went for it on a fourth and 21. It's a 48-yard field goal from here. Nalen's upset at Bulger on that last pass play. Once again, he had Foreman open to the outside. We talked about Bulger having great passing ability, good feet. Hits the balls that you're supposed to hit, and he's supposed to hit that out route. He had Foreman wide open. So a big play here for both teams, for West Virginia to try to get it back, and for Navy to keep the momentum. There are trips left set to begin. They go out of the shotgun. Bulger on the shovel pass to Zeroway, 25 for the 20, first down. Cuts it outside of the 15, down to the 12-yard line, and once again, the cutback ability of Amos Zeroway showed itself there. John, John Chavis made what might have been a saving tackle. Well, this is just a super call on fourth down. The shovel pass up inside. They catch Nettles, a defensive end, in a bind there. Nettles got upfield, the pitch underneath. And he gives Zaraway some room in the secondary. He's going to create some problems. So first down at the 11-yard line as West Virginia goes with a wrinkle. Zaraway running to the short side, behind a blocker to the 10, down to about the 7-yard line. Running right behind Solomon Page. And he could hide behind Page at 6'6", 300. Gary Lane makes the stop for Navy. Yeah, Solomon Page, the big left tackle. He's started all 28 games of his West Virginia career. This is number 29. Great size. He's the type of guy that NFL scouts are really watching him closely. Came out of the same high school as uh, Major Harris, who was one of the big local heroes in Morgantown. Remember him at quarterback not too many years ago? Give it to Zaraway again. Zaraway cut back. Touchdown, Mountaineers. Boy, draw that one up. Adam Creshawn is uh, looking for his equipment. Now that's almost not fair. <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. Oh, my. Watch the cut by Zeroway against the safety number 18, Creshawn. He freezes him and just slips it to the inside. I mean... You can't teach that. Try for point is up and good. We get a tie game again. And uh, this is starting to look like one of those games that could come down to the last possession. 24 Navy, 24 West Virginia. We're coming back. Well, there's the man of the moment. And I think you said it so well, David. Uh, you can't coach these things. Yeah, and what makes things happen for a Heisman Trophy winner is an offensive line giving him an opportunity to go man-to-man -man with a free safety. Great blocking up front. And watch right here. Zeroway's going to set up the move to the left and then back to the right inside. And Adam Creshawn fans, number 18. 
You know, the other thing that strikes me, too, is he's got that great acceleration after he makes his cut, and that does remind you of that guy in Detroit. Here's Vereen at the goal line. He's going to try it again. He's not going to do much better than he did last time. They'll get it at the 17-yard line. We'll jump away as we go to our college football Saturday studio, get an update with Kevin Frazier. Kevin? Barry, if there was one team in the country that you should not jump against the play fake, it would be Florida. The play fake, and look how wide open Travis McGriff is. Jesse Palmer hits him. Florida leads Alabama 13 to 3. All right, thanks, Kevin. Well, Florida, that's right. They're no secret, are they? Play oh. fake. Uh, oh. And the defense may be better than the offense this year. Yeah, they're struggling a little bit the quarterback. The Navy starts the 17 yard line. It didn't take them long to go all the way from this position the last time. Holly this time runs left. There's the pitch to Wolf. He's got a little room at the 20. At the 25, he gets about nine. Well, we got college football today. Tomorrow, it's another Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. We start off with a classic NFC East matchup. It'll be the Dallas Cowboys here in Washington, just up the road, to do battle for the Redskins. That's followed by the Eagles and the Denver Broncos, plus a whole lot of other regional action. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 o'clock on the left coast. You're hanging around. Going to go to that ball game? Yeah, I'm going to head on over and take a look at the Redskins and the Cowboys. A lot of talk here in the uh, Washington, D.C. area about the Redskins. I mean, that is the only show in town in Washington. Yeah, I had an opportunity to talk to Troy Aikman a little bit earlier in the week, and he was out throwing yesterday. He had the broken collarbone, but he said he got some extensive throwing in early in the week, and he wants to come back next week. Might be a little bit early. You want to want those bones to knit and heal, and maybe back in a couple weeks, though, Barry. He's a tough guy. Yeah, one of the tougher quarterbacks you'll find anywhere. And missed a lot of games as a member of the Dallas Cowboys. We get a uh, measurement here. That's very close. First down. I mean, uh, that's a first down by a dimple. So Navy moves the chains. First down at the 27-yard line. Steve Holly has executed this option offense extremely well so far today. It's time they load up to the right side, a slot right. And they run the other way. Holly on the keep, and that's not going to happen. Damon Cogdell, who's had a very good day defensively for West Virginia, makes the stop. Well, Navy might not have picked up good yardage on that play, but sometimes a, a play that doesn't pick up yards is a good play from the quarterback position. Hawley, a nice job of holding on to the ball there and not trying to pitch the ball, creating a turnover situation for the midshipman. I've been really impressed with his discipline, his decision-making ability. Three wideouts this time for Navy. They bring Green in the slot to the right side. Holly will go up off the play fake, throwing deep. He's got a man. He underthrew the ball up. Jerry Porter defensing, defending well. But I think the ball was underthrown intended for Mark Mill. Mill had a step for a moment. Yeah, Mill had a step, but Jerry Porter closed in a hurry. I mean, Holly has Mill open for two or three steps. And it's just a great job by number two Porter, the safety to close, gets that right hand up. That's the way you're supposed to play safety. Not going to get beat deep. Porter's played a good game. Porter guy who's played on both sides of the football for West Virginia. Third down. Not near show blitz. Now they back out of it. There's the option again, there's nothing doing as Holly has stopped after a gain of a couple and Navy's going to have to give it up. Again, it was Damon Cogdell that turned that play inside. Yeah, that play closed down in a hurry and Cogdell's done a heck of a job on this West Virginia defense. He's really shown a lot of lateral pursuit and ability to close and cut off that quarterback key. Trey Kalish will try to get this punt out of there. He had... Uh, had it partially blocked the last time. And this time a fake and a first down. And once again, Charlie Weatherby going right back into the 
bag. Direct snap to the up man, and the putter, Kalish did a great job to fake this. Well, here's the up man, and it's Limbert, the backup quarterback. And once again, Weatherby with a great call. And a nice run by Limbert to step out of that tackle. Remember the, the blocked field goal at the end of the first half? Limbert made a tackle for West Virginia. As we look at the punter there, deking in the backfield. And, and a good one. That kept the momentum of West Virginia going in the right direction. And a first down off the fake. So everything to Charlie Weatherby's pride has worked today. Here's Harden, the fullback, on the give. He gets four. But going back to Limbert on the blocked field goal, 17-17 tie just before half. West Virginia blocked a field goal attempt, and Limbert made the tackle. West Virginia would have taken that ball 95 yards the other way. Two big plays by the backup quarterback, Limbert. Limbert is in the ball game now, too, and he's in the ball game in a fullback spot. So what do you think? A little bit more trickery, perhaps? Who knows? With, with Weatherby, it's really tough to tell. He's got a lot of things he can go to in his back. So Limbert lines up at a fullback spot. And they run the option with Holly on the pitch to Vereen this time. Vereen's got a step. He's the 40 to the 35 on about the 32-yard line. Once again, excellent execution by the quarterback, Steve Holly. That's a great blocking on the outside by the wide receiver core at Navy. Now, Holly's going to open up and then reverse back on the speed option. That's Wolf, the slot back, getting a block inside. And down at the bottom of the screen, it looked like maybe Mill. I think that was Mark Mill at the bottom of the screen, but terrific blocking on the perimeter by Nate. Maybe likes their wideouts. They're pretty good size, too, much like West Virginia's, and they are called upon to block a lot more than uh, they would normally be in this scheme because Navy does not play a tight end, and they need all the blocking they can get. Here's Holly on the keep. He got a little seam, and a late flag comes in. As Holly got the 27-yard line, Barrett Green just smacked him. Yeah, that's part of the defensive game plan. But a hold against Navy, and that's going to get him marching backward. And your defense in the option, you want to take the quarterback down as many times as you can. You want to lay the wood to him. You want to wear him down. Holly well, didn't show many signs to me of wearing down in this game, but he sure took a wall up on that last play. So the midshipmen will back up here. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat first down. That's almost a cardinal sin, a holding call. Picking one up is an option offense. You're not equipped to pick up second and long and third and long situations. Let's take a look at the hit. Holly turning it up inside, doesn't have good vision, then boom. I'll say. And when you're quarterback, you don't want to be running in an upright position little bit exposed there and Holly took a shot to the breastplate and for his efforts he winds up at the first and 20. Holly going straight back look out here's a screen and it's finally caught should have been intercepted it's picked up instead by Limbert Limbert gets it back to the 37 yard line and boy did Navy dodge a bullet there yeah this should have been an interception by Thurston now, Holly's going to face some pressure, but it's design pressure. This is a screen pass set up to Limbert. Here comes Barrett Green up the gut. Nice job of Holly waiting, but not a good decision throwing that ball. Thurston should have had the interception, number 48. Another look at Green. He's one of the fastest linebackers in the country. Here's a flag comes in from the backfield. It's actually the referee who threw the flag. On the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That'll cost them five more. That'll cost them the five yards they gained the last time. And I think what that probably means, he didn't report. Well, either didn't report or they had too many in, men in the huddle. They, they tightened up on the rules in terms of substitutions because it puts such a bind on the defense, Barry. The nickel teams, the dime teams, all the substituting that's going on. They've done it at the NFL level as well. And Navy gets hit with a five-yard penalty. And Navy very lucky to still have the ball after that Hawley screen pass. And that result is a second and 21. 
They give it straight ahead to the fullback, Dingle, and he stops as he gets to the 40-yard line. Well, it's hardcore football on Fox Sports Net. Ronnie Lott, Bill Moss, Ron Pitts, they tell you all the turf talk. And it comes from the toughest guys in the NFL. That's hardcore X's and O's, hardcore blood, sweat, tears. Hardcore football, and that's for the hardcore fan. It's hardcore football Tuesday at 8 on Fox Sports Net. So it's going to be third down now and uh, 17. Ball just inside the 40-yard line. This is a very tough play for a team like the Naval Academy. Holly this time rolls to his left. Now he steps up, buys some time. Now he's going to run. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Kevin Lando makes the stop, and Navy will have to punt and try to put West Virginia deep in its own territory. Yeah, tough situation to be in as a option offense third and 17 and a nice job by Holly just to pull the ball down there now you hate to give the ball back to this West Virginia offense the way they're moving it in the second half but the worst thing you can do is turn it over so always going to put things back in the hands of his defense and they will try to pin West Virginia back if at all possible twisting kick might have got too much of this and it does hit at the one-yard line, skips into the end zone. It's only a net of plus 12 for Navy, and uh, West Virginia will have it at the 20-yard line, tied at 24 when we come back. Welcome back. We're in Annapolis, about uh, 30 miles or so from that scene. The Lincoln Memorial pulling back off the reflection pond there at... Uh, in the nation's capital in a beautiful weekend although it's uh, turned a little bit chilly today beautiful day yesterday west virginia starts the 20 yard line again this airway bounces off the first man and then is surrounded and down right about where he got it in the first place brad wimsat on the tackle there's a mountaineer he's jacked up and so are the six thousand odd fans who made the trek from morgantown about a four-hour drive from here to Morgantown, West Virginia. Great supporters of the West Virginia football program. Not only a special trip for the fans, but also the coaches. All the West Virginia coaches just really taken by this campus and all the tradition here at Navy. And they're getting a pretty good football game for their money as well. Bulger will throw. He's started to look deep. Now he comes back. Nice effort by Bulger. Foreman makes the catch. And he's going to be close to a first down on Rico Hunter defending. And uh, Bulger that time, that was probably his third receiver, would you say, David? That was either his third or his fourth choice. And Bulger, some great work with his feet in the pocket. And not bad numbers either. Coming into this game, he's hitting over 65% of his balls. We mentioned he had a big game against Ohio State in the opener. West Virginia not able to come up with a win. But this is one of the best quarterbacks that people haven't heard of in the Midwest and the West Coast, but they sure know him on the East Coast. Well, and that's because the presence of Amos Zeraway. And there's a fumble, and that's going to, uh, I believe, cost them a first down. Now, it's possible they might have gotten enough yardage out of that to get a first down. Well, the this question is, who has the football? Well, there's that also. Maybe <laughs> says they do. It's a bad exchange. Remember, it's a third and short. Now we're going to get a There's a personal foul call. There's yeah. a personal foul on Page. The left tackle, number 77 for West Virginia. And don't you know Don Nealon's going to be in his ear? And that's a senior. That's a guy who shouldn't be doing that stuff. West Virginia got the ball, but that's not really what's important right now. Wow, close call for West Virginia. And one thing's for sure, the Mountaineers are going to have third and long. Well, let's see if they made this first down. I mean, it's... Well, that's true, Barry. If they did pick up the first down, then they'll have first and 25. Good point. Eric DeGro was the man who recovered the fumble. The official call is unsportsmanlike conduct. How can a six foot three, 300 pounder <laughs> commit a late hit after the after the play and pick up an unsportsmanlike conduct call. From where I come from, that's a personal foul all the way. There's a snap. Hard to 
tell whether Bulger pulling out early or whether the center just didn't get the snap up there. But you know what? A, a coach, a good coach, says, hey, it's not the quarterback's fault. It's not the center's fault. Both of you have to work together. Well, now we believe the uh, conventional wisdom up here in our booth is that this should be first and 25. It was a dead ball foul. But instead, they moved the chains back to the 15-yard line from the point of that uh, penalty. That and doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. I think, I think they're missing this one, Barry. It should either be first and 25 or third and long, depending on whether West Virginia picked up the first down on the fumble. Well, it was a dead ball penalty, so I don't think there's a choice to be made, but I think it should be first and 25. Bulger throws to the tight end that time, wide open. is back then. Uh, he takes it to about the 38-yard line, and that's going to be a first down and, and would have been regardless of what it was. Right, and, I, and what, I wasn't saying that there was a choice there, Barry, but depending on the measurement, it would be first and 25 or third and long. And really, no matter, no matter what we we're talking about up here in the booth, Bulger's right back in business, hitting backed over the middle. And that's a tough call for Nate. So the chains move regardless, and the ball spotted at the 39-yard line, first down Mountaineers. Play fake, Bulger will go up again, throwing deep, wide open with Saunders, but I think that's on a little miscommunication. Saunders broke it to the outside, and I think Bulger was thinking he was going to let a fly. Now, well, Bulger's turned it up with the numbers there, as you see, but on that last pass play, there was no confusion, really. That's Saunders going to the post corner route, and Bulger misfired on that one. He just flat overthrew that ball, and he had a wide open receiver. So it'll be second down to him. There's Zerway, and Zerway runs into all kinds of traffic. Stop for a loss on the play. Well, Navy has done an excellent job on Amos Zerway, short of the 35-yard run off what amounted to a broken play on his first offensive carry of the day. They have managed to keep him pretty much in check. Yeah, this has been a great game. I mean, who would have imagined Navy tied late in the third quarter against West Virginia, the number 16th ranked team in the country, as Zaraway starts to rev things up a little bit in the second half. Well, Zaraway, 15 carries for 41 yards since that first carry of 35. Out of the shotgun this time. Bulger throws. It is caught by Green well short of the first down. And the Mountaineers will have to give it up. Mike Weedle defending, and they are trying to pick on Weedle, and Weedle doing everything he can. Oh, that's an unbelievable play by Weedle. I mean, a great close on the outside. We talked about his lack of size, but no lack of heart. And he's got a lot of explosiveness in him. He can jump, he closes well on the football, and he turns the ball back over to his offense. So Jay Taylor will do the punting. Ryan Reed will be the deep man for Navy. Turns this one over pretty good. And Reed's going to handle it at the five yard line. Slips the first man, gets the 10, tries to get the outside, nothing doing. He stopped as he crossed the 10 yard line by Casey Schiller. So Navy hanging around here. Will now try to do a little bit of business on the offensive side of the ball with just 25 ticks remaining in the third quarter. Uh, the midshipman really needed that last set of downs that last possession against West Virginia to turn the ball back to their offense and stem the tide. West Virginia had scored the last two times they touched the football. In fact, two touchdowns. So now it's Hawley and the offense's job to come right back down the field. Well, you know, it's funny. I was just going to mention this, and now here's this graphic. As you can see, Navy has had the ball more than 10 minutes, more than West Virginia has. And here's a kick to the fullback, and that was almost a give to the linebacker. And with that, very likely the end of the third quarter, Ryan Brady was coming right up the gut, and he was right in Dingle's face. And I think that's going to be the last play of the quarter. Five seconds remaining, and uh, this is going to tick down, and it'll be the end of the third period. And uh, the midshipmen of Navy hanging in there before the home folk. West Virginia unable to shake a stubborn Navy team. We are tied at 24. We start the final quarter of what has been an excellent football game. Navy 24, West Virginia 24. 
And it is being played before the second largest crowd ever here at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium, 36,009. It's the largest crowd in any game other than a game against another academy. Navy at the 10 yard line, second down. Give it the fullback Dingle again, and Dingle gets it across the 15 to the 16, but we're gonna get a flag before the play. Navy starting to make a few mistakes offensively here, and uh, they've been penalized, and it's cost them. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, you can't afford an illegal procedure call down near your own end zone. And not only have they committed a few mistakes, Barry, but they just have not had as much success here in the second half running the fullback. And, and I think that's taking away from the option offense. Dingle was running wild, especially in the second quarter. But West Virginia up front, they're playing tougher. They've made some adjustments, tightening their tackles down to take away that fullback guy. And they give it to Dingle again, and nothing doing. He gets back to about the nine-yard line, and it's going to be third and 11. Cogdell and Landall makes make the tackle for West Virginia. Cogdell having an excellent second half here. And here is the brigade, part of the brigade. They're pumped. 4,000 strong, and the last time they beat a top 25 team was back in the early 80s, actually 1984, against the number two rated Jane Cox of South Carolina. And this is this is danger time, Barry. You want to be careful with your quarterback, Holly, down here. You don't want to turn the ball over deep in your own territory with a tie score. Third and 11. Holly straight back to pass. Hit as he threw. Lost the football. It's going to be touchdown, West Virginia. Just as you said, David. The officials hesitated because I think they were trying to determine whether or not his arm was in motion, if that was going to be an incomplete pass. They ruled correctly, I believe, that it wasn't. West Virginia recovers in the end zone with Antoine Lake for the score, and just like that, the Mountaineers are on top. Huge mistake. And it may be a mistake that Navy may not have a chance to come back from. Try for point is up and good off a bad hole, incidentally. And the Mountaineers, 48 seconds into the fourth quarter, have taken the lead for the first time in this ball game. So West Virginia leads for the first time on the play of that man, Antoine Lake. He made the play on both ends, the stop and the recovery. Yeah. Irv Dingle, the fullback here, is going to get caught up inside. He's not going to make the block on Antoine Lake. Antoine Lake coming to the top of the screen and frees it right there. See how Dingle can't get outside and make the block? And he gets beat to the outside by Antoine Lake. Antoine Lake makes the hit, and then he's rewarded with a touchdown. Now, Hawley's got to, got to do a better job, too, of picking up Antoine Lake in his vision. You can't let a man come from the front side and take the ball away from you like that, especially when you're throwing out of your own end zone. Big play on the defensive side for the Mountaineers, and that was the questionable side. They made two big plays in this game, and that's turned the game. The interception by Tompkins in that one. Here's Vereen at the seven-yard line. And Vereen gets the 21-yard line. And remember, we were talking about the fact that Navy's biggest problem this year has been leaving it on the carpet, and they've done it again. You can see minus five in giveaway takeaways this year. Last year, plus 13, number six in the nation. It cost them their first two losses. And it could cost them this one. Yeah, it was a big game in the opener against Wake Forest. Hawley had a 14-3 lead under two minutes going into the locker room at the end of the first half against the Deacons. And he turned the ball over on an interception. And Wake Forest scored, turned the game around. Big possession here for Navy. Momentum now is shifted back to the guys from Morgantown. Here's a pitch this time to Vereen. He's got no place to go. He's got a reverse field. And now he's got a little room, 15-20. To about the 20, that's a long way to go for a gain of a half a yard. He ran about 25 yards, didn't he? At least. <laughs> it's going to be second down and nine. Well, right now, the Navy offense uh, in a little disarray. Been eight different ball carriers for Navy in this ball game so far. 
This time it's Holly on the keep, and he stopped by the first man. He got about two. It's going to be third and seven. Right now we go to our college football Saturday studios. Kevin Frazier with an update. Kevin, what's up? Thanks a lot, Barry. Florida taking on Alabama. You know, Gator defensive coordinator Bob Stoop says the problem with his team is that they can make a turnover. They just can't take advantage once they make the turnover. Tim Bowens puts the ball on the mat, but Alabama recovers. Two plays later, they score. And now you got a ball game in Tuscaloosa. Right? Boy, is that a change, too. I, until last year, I didn't know they had a defensive coordinator. Big turnaround for the tie this year. Slot left, third down, big play. Holly on the quarterback draw. Forget about it. The Mountaineers will get it back. Barrett Green again, and they have just stepped this defense up in the second half. Yeah, and the, and the factor here is West Virginia is learning on the fly. They haven't had a chance in practice with all the substitutions and the injuries to really work against the option. They had an open week two weeks ago. They wanted to get to it in the spring, and you know, Don Nalen said, we just haven't had a chance to work against this option in practice. Well, they're getting a lot of experience as this game goes on, and they're starting to really tighten down on the option offense. And this punting game of Navy's has been something of an adventure here again. Is the fake and the short pitch to the punter, and is he going to get there? It's going to be close to a first down. I don't think so. No, Stop he didn't the, get it. Stop the 29-yard line, and West Virginia's going to be in business. He didn't get it, and this time the gamble is going to really cost Weatherby and the midshipmen. Now this is going to be an option play. The snap is going to come to the up back. And once again, Limbert running the option. And he's going to pitch it to the punter, Trey Kalish. And Kalish stepped out of bounds. One more step, he would have had it. As it is, he's about two yards short. And now West Virginia really in business, leading by seven. And with the ball at the Navy 29-yard line. That's pretty risky inside your own 30-yard line going for another fake. You've already faked the putt once and well over 11 minutes to go in this game. Let's see if the Mountaineers try to make a pay early. They give it to Zeroway. Zeroway's got a little gap. He's the 20th and down about the 16-yard line. And we've still got a lot of football coming your way. When we get out of Dodge, it's going to be Southern Miss and the two-lane Green Wave. And the Green Wave, remember, undefeated. May or may not have their quarterback, Sean King, today, though. Number two, Nebraska, then will go down to Stillwater to do battle with Oklahoma State. Tough home team, but boy, Nebraska, they're a monster. And then we go to the Pac-10, where Arizona travels up to Seattle. Remember, Arizona one of the longest winning streaks in college football right now. And that quarterback duo for Arizona is going to give the dogs some trouble up in Seattle. I think they will, I think. Uh, and they'll get after you defensively, too. We're going to get a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, a personal foul penalty against West Virginia. Now it's going to be a hold against West Virginia. It's going to back him back to the 36-yard line. So it'll be first down now. And 17. Bolger will go up in trouble. Down he goes back to the 44-yard line. And the Navy defense jumps up. Greg Adams just blew in. And not only Greg Adams, but Daryl Hill. And one of the rare times where Navy gets to the quarterback in this game. Bolger came into this game, and he only been stacked three times in three games. But Adams, that's a nice, strong move up the middle. And this Navy defensive front, a lot of substitutions. Weatherby's done a great job of keeping this defensive line fresh. And they have risen to the challenge against a very talented West Virginia offense. They did come on a blitz that time. Darrell Hill was coming on a blitz, and that caused some assignment problems for West Virginia up front. Give the sack to Adams. High snap. Bolger pulls it down. He's in trouble again. And he winds up throwing it for zero way. He can't hang on. That was going to be a big loss. I remember earlier, earlier in this game, Hawley threw a real risky screen pass. That time, Bolger might have gotten away with a poor play. If you don't have what you want at the quarterback position on a screen play, you're taught to throw the ball into the ground. Just throw it at the feet of the running back. And it looked to me like Bolger was trying to complete that ball. So it's third down and a whole bunch, 24 for West Virginia. This following a fake punt by Navy that gave the Mountaineers the ball at the 29 yard line. They got a man uncovered here once again on the left side. Bolger on the shovel pass to Zeroway. Zeroway at the 40, trying to work outside. Gets there, 35-30, and gets knocked out of bounds to the 29-yard line. And it could put them in field goal range. 47-yard field goal from here, I don't know. 
It'll be interesting. Nealon's been going for it on fourth down when he gets down near the 30-yard line. This would be about a 30, yeah, about a 45-yard try, Barry. Maybe even a little more than that. Maybe 46-yarder. And Nealon has, Nealon has opted against the 49, 50-yard try twice in this game already. And once again, they're going to go for it on fourth down. So it's fourth down and nine. failed the last two times. Once again, they got a man uncovered here. Bolger throws underneath. That's the man right there. And that man is Antonio Brown, who picks up the first down and gets him down to the six-yard line. And that's just a missed assignment there by Navy. They never had him covered on either of the last two plays. Yeah, just a nice job by the Mountaineers spreading the Navy defense out with their formation. Antonio Brown in the slot, Bolger on the roll. He's always shown the ability to throw the ball on the run. A very good passer outside of the pocket on the move, and he puts this ball right on the money, gives Brown a nice picture on the throw, and the ability to turn the ball up. Well-designed play. It just crippled the Navy defense. They just didn't get it right on two plays in a row. They went over the shovel pass the first time. The second time, they went right back to it. Zero way is stopped short of the line of scrimmage. Bolger now incidentally well over 300 yards, 333 yards on 22 of 33 and a couple of touchdowns. And John Chavis coming up from a safety position to make that play. That's a killer, Barry. Third and long. Navy has West Virginia out of field goal position and then they give up the play to Zaraway and then the fourth down conversion. West Virginia is going to take a timeout now with the ball at the seven yard line. It'll be second down and goal for the Mountaineers when we come back to Annapolis after this. Just over 10 minutes remaining in the ball game and West Virginia threatening to take a two touchdown lead here. They lead by seven, they have a second and goal at the Navy seven yard line. Zero away the lone setback. This is zero way, right side easy. Loops in, touchdown West Virginia. Well, the Naval Academy might have, might have gone to the well one time too often. This one's too easy, David. And the Navy defense had Zeroway bottled up for much of the first half. Just counter action up inside. And the safety, Gary Lane, number one for Navy, taking an outside tack. And Zeroway just walking in. 34 career touchdowns, number two in Mountaineer history. And this big West Virginia offensive line is really starting to exert themselves here in the second half. Flag is down. Unsportsmanlike conduct against West Virginia. 15-yard penalty. The try will be from the 18-yard line. Makes it a 35-yard extra point attempt. I assume that's for celebration, although I didn't see it from zero way. Either celebration or taunting, but it's become very apparent here in the fourth quarter. This defensive front for Navy has held up well for Charlie Weatherby, the better part of this game. But the offensive line for the Mountaineers is starting to dominate, Barry. Yeah, our spotter Dick Quinlan says that uh, Zaraway took his helmet off in the end zone, and that's what that penalty is for. That's another one of those, why? That's the old Miami hurricane rule. I just think we have to temper that a little bit, because he was not excessively celebrating. Try for point is good from 35 yards off. Zaraway has the touchdown, they get a 35 point conversion and the Mountaineers lead it by 14, 38, 24. Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you today by Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. I think that was the SS Nori, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm not much of a seafaring man. I'm having trouble getting my sea legs this week, Barry. But what a beautiful spot. Everybody what a beautiful running back. Somebody talk about, <laughs> you talk about just a featured guy. I truly believe he's one of the best three or four backs in the country, Barry. We're speculating up here that 15-yard penalty might have been for a bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> this is Vereen at the four-yard line. Gets to the 10. Got a little gap. Now tries to step outside. Gets the 22-yard line. Stopped by Scooter Davis. 
And now Navy has uh, just got to do some business. They're out of uh, wouldas and couldas and shouldas. They need haftas. Well, and Weatherby has done a great job. The onside kick at the top, a fake punt to pick up a first down with Limber at the backup quarterback. But the last fake punt, I think, was a little bit ill-advised, a little bit too deep in Navy territory, a little bit too much yardage. And Navy was only down by a touchdown at the time. Now Hawley in a big hole. So Holly this time on the keep, and now the pitch, and Wolf gets it up across the 30 to the 31-yard line. And Holly might have gotten away with a forward lateral there. And that's okay if it takes place behind the line of scrimmage, but Holly was past the line of scrimmage. Watch Holly. Now he's going to get past the line of scrimmage here. And let's see if it's a forward lateral. Yes, it is. That's an illegal forward pass. And Maybe should have, should have drawn a flag on that play. Instead, it's second and short for the Naval Academy. And they give to the fullback, or rather to the uh, quarterback, Holly. And Holly gets it to the 37-yard line. It'll be a first down. David Lightcap makes the tackle. Critics of the option offense, the wishbone, the spread option. They say the problem with this offense is if you're down by more than a score in the fourth quarter, you just don't have the ability to come back. And that's the uphill struggle that Hawley and his Navy mates are facing right now. They need a score in a hurry, and then they need a stop from their defense against a very tough West Virginia offense. First down at the 38 is where they mark it, just short of the 38-yard line. They've been green in motion. They give to the fullback Dingle. He gets to the 40 and maybe the 41. A gain of about two. Right now, let's jump away, go to our college football Saturday studio and get an update with Kevin Fraser. Kevin? Very bad weather and a sore ankle slowed Ron Dane early, but the big boy just keeps coming. 23 carries, 116 yards. Wisconsin leads Indiana 24-20. Ron Dane is a load. Good comeback, though, for Wisconsin. They were down by 11 points in the third quarter. Ball just across the 40-yard line. Here's the pitch this time to Wolf again. Not much. Got to the 32. I beg your pardon, the 42. And that's about it. Barrett Green makes the tackle for West Virginia. A reminder to stay tuned after we get done here in Annapolis. We're going down to New Orleans. Southern Miss and Tulane. Paul Kennedy, Brian Baldinger, and Lewis Johnson on hand to tell you all about that one. The big question there, of course, whether or not Sean King will be available for Tulane. Let's hope he can go because he's a real treat to watch at quarterback. He gets back five, seven steps, and boom, that ball comes out in a hurry. Strong arm and a real potent offensive passing game down at Tulane. Third down and long, and they give it to Dingle, and that's not going to happen. You got to go here. Yeah, you do. That's exactly what I was going to say. The ball at the 46-yard line is where it's marked. It's going to be fourth and two, and this is a this is a must situation for Navy at this juncture. We talked about a must drive. We also have to look for a pass down the middle of the field if Navy is able to pick up this first down. That's the way you pick up some yardage, and it's only a matter of time if they do pick up the first down before they go back down the field with a pass. Fourth down and a long two. And Holly on the keeper's not going to get it. And West Virginia will get it back in Navy territory. Yeah, it's a moot point now, and Charlie Weatherby knows it on the sideline. That's a tough thing. If you're not passing the ball effectively, you don't have a lot of options besides opening up on the option play. A great play by Brady, the defensive lineman, making the stop inside. Diggle and Holly each over 100 yards. The Navy offense, which was very efficient for the first three quarters of this game, has uh, been handled now by a West Virginia defense that has made some excellent adjustments, especially in the latter part of the third quarter and here in the fourth. Now what they did is they started moving those defensive ends and tackles down and shutting off the fullback dive, and that has hurt the Navy running game in the second half. Now you have an idea when I see a whole lot of this man. Well, play fake. I thought we were going to see zero away. We're not. Bolger going for it all to Sanders. Missed it. Pass 
intended for number six, David Saunders. Mark Bulger, despite the fact that he has some pretty gaudy numbers, will uh, probably go to bed tonight remembering the ones that weren't rather, the one, rather than the ones that were. This, you're, you're absolutely right. This has not been one of his better games. He's had a whole sack full of yards, but he's missed some wide open receivers. And, you know, first, this is the first time I've seen Bulger live outside of practice. He's been a little bit lazy with his deliveries. Mechanics, he's not finishing the pass, not finishing the throwing motion on some of his plays, and it's hurt him as far as his accuracy. Give it his airway straight ahead. He's stopped as he gets to about the 43. Brad Wimsat makes the stop. This is a very young Navy defense. Talked about the fact that West Virginia, while they are a good team this year, might be an even better team next year. That certainly can be said about this Navy team. They have a whole lot of returning players. All the linebackers are back. Uh, I thought uh, Burlani Nettles, the uh, true freshman playing defensive end, has done an excellent job today. Whips had it, made that tackle a moment ago, just a sophomore. Tight end decked in motion this time, and Bulger will throw again. Got all day to throw the football. Now he runs out of time, and he unloads it. And that might be a hold. Yeah, we're going to get a penalty thrown by the back judge from about 30 yards away. Foreman got abused at the end of that play and before the ball reached him. Now, it might have been an uncatchable ball, but the ball was in the air. Well, I think he was being held, so I don't think there's any... I don't think you can call that uncatchable, but I think it might be a hold instead of interference. Well, it's either a hold or interference, definitely when the ball was in the air. And it is a hold. The foreman's going to be working in the middle of the field, and there it is. Actually, it is before Bolger lets the ball go. Daryl Hill right here. See the tackle in the middle of the screen? You can't do that. You can't hold up the receiver and... You're absolutely right. That was a good pickup, Barry. So it'll be a first down for West Virginia as ever so slowly Navy starts to unravel here. The brigade still on its feet, still cheering. Zeroway tries to bounce this outside. Can't do it. Hanging on for dear life down on the bottom of the pile was Matt Daniel. Daniel's had a nice game for Navy. Well, everybody talks about who's going to win the Heisman Trophy, even though I think it's very premature, and I, I'm not crazy nuts about the idea of talking about it this early in the season, but uh, he certainly is a guy who is... Uh, who was in the hunt, and, I, and so far this year, despite the fact that, as we said, it is early in the season, it's been all about who's not winning it rather than who is winning it. Well, the performance this afternoon isn't going to catch the eye of many voters across the country, but it's just a matter of Navy choosing to take away the run, and West Virginia has gotten it done with the pass. I saw somebody riding off Ricky Williams. There's Zeroway, and he turns it upfield, gets to the 26. Somebody in the press this past week wrote off Ricky Williams as a, a possible high school trophy winner. I'll tell you what. I think he's got a real legitimate chance to win. We well, had a look at him last week. 311 yards, six touchdowns. He's gotten Kansas State and UCLA out of the way, two top five teams. He still has to go up and face Nebraska and Lincoln. That'll be a tough game for the Longhorns. But I look forward to Ricky Williams piling up some numbers here the rest of the year. He's got to do it against a good team. And I think that's uh, that could be said about Amos Zeroway also. I think Brock Hewitt hurt himself in that game last week against Nebraska. It's Kate McNown, I think, really needed the television exposure with a game that got canceled because of uh, the hurricane, or the supposed hurricane, in Miami last week. That's going to be a first down to the tight end, Breck. And I think the same could be said of Tim Couch. Uh, while he's got great talent, and in the big games, uh, a lot of his points have come after the fact. A lot of his numbers, I should say, have come after the fact. You know, Fox Sports News Primetime is your source for college football news. Talk about the Heisman Trophy. Talk about what teams are moving up. Talk about who remains undefeated. We got college football like nobody else. Fox Sports News tonight after all the games. Zero away with a spin and goes down at the 20-yard line. Shaka Martin 
Yet another uh, true freshman playing for the Naval Academy. One of the reasons that Navy does not feature a lot of true freshmen, and you alluded to this earlier, is uh, Plebe Summer, which goes on for six weeks, and it says this takes the, the legs away from a lot of these freshmen. They're just not able to come into a football camp and, uh, and do any serious business, so they just don't count on first-year freshmen, but Charlie Weatherby's got a lot of them this year. And there are uh, part of the brigade. Not real happy right at the moment. Swoop in for Zeroway, and he lost the football, and let's see who's got it. I think Ivan Garvin got it back for West Virginia. Yeah, Swoop took a pretty big hit on that last play, and it looked like Anthony Beck, the big tight end for West Virginia, covered that football. You're never really sure down at the end of the, underneath those piles. Sometimes the guy who has the ball initially doesn't end up with the ball when they unpile. A lot of struggling and fighting going on over the football. Nice play by Beck. Yeah, it was Beck who got it back. And a swoop is going to take the handoff from Bolger. He's into the game for Zeraway. And watch the hit. Wimsat coming down. And Doffemeyer, the free safety. That's a big hit. Ball on the turf. And Beck, a big tight end covering the football. Beck's had a very nice uh, game here, rather quietly. Uh, this time Brown comes in motion. Bolger rolls out, looks to the end zone, and throws a great catch that time by David Saunders at the three-yard line. You won't see a better catch than this on this particular Saturday. Bolger's not going to only overthrow him. He's going to throw this ball high. Half roll. Great job by West Virginia up front with the pass protection. And look at him stretch out for that football. That's a circus catch. I, I'm not even sure. Coming down with the football. I'm not real sure he was the intended receiver. I think he might have been thrown for Foreman in the end zone. Uh, Bolger's been overthrowing a lot of balls this afternoon. At times it's been tough to figure out who he's throwing to. This is Swoop, and uh, swooping in to get him was uh, John Chavis. Swoop uh, dropped the football, but they're going to say uh, that is not a fumble. Yeah, to be fair to it, though, I, I really like Bolger. He's one of my favorite guys to watch because he's so poised. He's got great feet. He's a good decision maker. Talking to his head coach, Don Nealon. Nealon says, this is, this is the type of guy you'd like to have marry your daughter. He's got all his things squared away, and he's a great leader. Still has a year left, too, though. Then, of course, you said Don Nealon. Of course, you had that happen, didn't you? Don Nealon's daughter married Jeff Hostetler. <laughs> and swoops just waltzes into the end zone for the West Virginia touchdown that will wrap this one up. So Alvin Swoop gets into the action. The junior from Port St. Lucie, Florida, who didn't play, uh, wasn't even in school last year. Well, that was a walk through the park. And this Navy defense has played gallantly throughout this game. They've just been worn down here in the fourth quarter. And a couple mistakes, a couple turnovers really turned this game around. This was a dogfight coming into the fourth quarter. Trying for point is up and good. And it is a 21-point West Virginia lead, and this one's no longer in doubt. Great effort by Navy, but the Mountaineers doing it all. And the Mountaineer uh, doing some push-ups right on top of our graphic. That's a very hard thing to do. You know, that's a very thin graphic. Yeah, and that outfit isn't very light either. 21-point lead now for West Virginia. I think, uh, David, here's probably the play that really was the turning point. Yeah, top of the screen, Antoine Lay coming from the front side, strips the football. Remember, the score was 24-24, and Lay covers the football in the end zone, and that definitely was the turning point in this ballgame. Great effort by Navy, but uh, I think you probably have to say the better team is winning this game today. Well, we talked about it before that third down play. Very tough time to drop Holly back in the end zone, and Navy ended up paying for it. Very similar type of game for West Virginia than the one they had against Tulsa last week. I and mean, the final score is not going to uh, indicate the real story of the game. Green at about the six-yard line. Stopped as he crosses the 20 to about the 23. We'll remind you the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producer for College Football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. 
Today's game was produced by Jerry Weinstein and directed by Michael Ireland. College Football Saturday Studio produced by Lloyd Maxson and directed by Brad Toberman. The Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Jenkins. That's a military term, isn't it? Field Operations. <laughs> We're talking about so much history, so much tradition, you can feel it walking around on campus here in Annapolis. I thought you were going to get busted for walking on the grass yesterday. I expected to find you in the brig this morning. Mark Mill gets it up to the 30-yard line for Mark Bulger, a career high in passing. But once again, I, I don't think, if you ask Mark, and he's a terrific young man, I, I don't think he would probably say this was his greatest day. Yeah, he threw some great balls, but he had some misfires. And if you talk to Mark, he'd say he had more misfires today than, than on one of his normal afternoons. West Virginia, though, has that ability to take what's given. And they, Amy was trying to take away zero away and did a fairly good job of that, although uh, Amos did wind up with 95 yards on 23 carries and a couple of touchdowns. Not a bad day, really, when you really stop to think about it, but 35 of them came on the first snap of the day. And so Bulger uh, did what was left. And what was left, of course, was uh, to pick the Navy apart, the passing department. Holly rolls to his right, throws underneath, and having to make a circus catch was Metcalf. And there is famous Amos and friends. Workman like effort for the Mountaineers and for Amos Zaraway today. Tell you what, they had a scare thrown into them in this football game right down to the end of the third quarter. Metcalf again uh, with the reception. That's going to be close to a first down. I think this is maybe enough for a first down. Maybe going without a huddle and some very heroic performances from the midshipmen this afternoon. Metcalf, the slot back, Dingle playing well at fullback was very impressed by Hawley and, and also some very good work by the heavies up front, the big offensive line. And now uh, you have to, have to ask the question, why wouldn't they have gone without a huddle at the end of the first half when they were driving and uh, did not have a judicious use of the clock? Now there's no excuse for that, Barry, from a team that passes the ball a lot, but you know, Hawley's a young quarterback, this is a young offense, and I'm sure Navy working in practice on a lot of things that don't include clock offense at this point. And we're going to get a timeout as uh, Navy will talk it over, try to get a couple more before things are done. We're coming back, West Virginia by 21. 45 to 24, West Virginia lead, 115 remaining, and Navy will be looking at a second down and seven. We'll remind you that uh, as soon as we leave Annapolis, we're going to take you back out to Southern California. To our College Football Saturday studios, Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow with a post-game report. A lot of great football action, and of course, baseball action as well today. Those guys are going to be busy all afternoon. Holly throwing deep, and we're going to get a flag. It took a while for the official to dig down in his pocket. I thought maybe he was going to throw his keys. <laughs> He's looking to throw something, and that was it. out and up on the outside. Looked like they were trying to work to Travis Williams. Charles Fisher, the cornerback, gets flagged on this one. Got plenty of football coming up after we're done here at Annapolis. Southern Miss and Tulane from New Orleans. Paul Kennedy and company standing by for that one. And then number, number two ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers in Stillwater, Oklahoma. New battle with the Cowboys. Arizona. They haven't lost since the middle of last year. Playing against Washington, still licking its wounds after that pounding they took in Lincoln last week. That Nebraska game is really not at Stillwater. It's in Kansas City at Arrowhead Stadium. Which probably means that although it's a road game for Nebraska, they're going to fill that place. Yeah, they travel well, that's for sure. We had them earlier in Berkeley against California, and there was as many Nebraska fans as there were California fans. Holly throws underneath, reaching catch by Wolf for his efforts. He's rewarded four yards. Another good afternoon for Jason Wolf. There's a good story, Barry. You know, the letterman at Navy, they get the big N on their letterman sweater, and you only get that star if you beat Army. I thought that was the world's largest golf ball. <laughs> Ollie straight back, look out! Almost got beheaded. Instead, he bought time and throws underneath for Metcalf. And Metcalf's going to have a first down running laterally at the 23-yard line. Jerry Porter 
made the stop, but David Carter just about undressed. Oh. Yeah, you could see David Carter salivating as he came off the left edge there. Nice play by Porter, but Holly's showing some eyes in the back of his helmet there to escape that one. First down at the 23-yard line now, 45 seconds remaining in the game. Holly will throw, looks to the end zone, throws short, it's almost picked. Knocked down by Scooter Davis. I'll tell you, the West Virginia defense, uh, considering it is inexperienced and thin, has played pretty well. It took them a while to figure out this Navy spread option game. And, you know, we talked a lot about it over the course of the second half, Barry. A lot of success with the fullback early, and then West Virginia took it away. Speaking of success, some of the great battles are uh, cited here at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium, and that's... Uh, Part of the memorial right there. That bat pass is batted down. Yeah, some pretty significant engagements over the course of World War II and Korea, Vietnam, even Desert Storm. They still have about five more sections to fill. Uh, assumedly five more sections and we're at peace for the rest of the li rest of life. <laughs> There's no room for battles anymore. <laughs> Now, this was just a great experience this week coming in and seeing the way they get it done in Annapolis. Holly the throw again has to step up, and now he's got no place to go. He is surrounded and down for a loss with 24 ticks left. And it'll be fourth down, and they will have one last hurrah here for the Naval Academy as they call a timeout. 45 to 24 ball game. Navy led this 17 to 3. And since that time, uh, good adjustments on the part of the West Virginia defense. And an opportunistic West Virginia offense that took what was given them. And uh, they did take advantage of the smaller Navy corners. Ohio State, the number one team in the country, they beat West Virginia, remember, are beating Penn State today, handling them pretty well, actually. 28 to 9 after falling behind early. Nebraska plays in Kansas City, as we said earlier, against Oklahoma State. Tennessee and Auburn later on this afternoon. UCLA, after uh, a week off, which they really didn't want, will play Washington State, smarting from a loss to California. Kansas State has the week off before a big game next week in Boulder against Colorado. LSU will get it on with number 12, Georgia, tonight. Penn State, as we said earlier, losing to the Buckeyes. Florida handling Alabama, but doing it on the defense more than they are the offense. Florida State whipping up on Maryland. Not as bad as you might have expected, though. Remember, West Virginia handled Maryland easily a couple of weeks ago. And San Jose State uh, is in well over the Spartans' heads at Virginia. Nebraska, of course, coming up later today on Fox Sports Net in that game in Kansas City against the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. They were the surprise team in the Big 12 last year. Tall order for them today against Nebraska. I'm not sure, but the Nebraska might not be better this year than they were last year. Here's Holly throwing and a comeback catch, but they're going to say out of bounds, and that's going to be it for Navy. And all that has to happen now is for Mark Bulger to take a knee one time, and uh, that will be it. And there's, uh, is that Sammy Sosa? <laughs> it's funny, Don Nealon talking to us yesterday, he's talking about Amos Zero. He's, usually when you have a Heisman candidate, you say he's real humble and you know, doesn't talk much and taking things in stride. And Don Nealon told us the opposite. He said, hey, I got to watch Amos. You know, he's, he's been eating up some of this publicity. He's been, at times, tough to keep him uh, you know, at bay, but a couple great performances early in this year. He kept battling, had a, had some success in the second half today. Well, this crowd that was so much into this game is uh, going to go quietly off into the Annapolis sunset here. Bulger takes the knee, and that, uh, that should be it. And you have to give credit to Don Nealon and the West Virginia Mountaineers that came into a hostile place here, and they got the crowd into it early and fell behind 17-3. Didn't hang their heads, came back, and uh, put in an impressive performance. Well, you have to give great credit to West Virginia, but also to Navy. This game was 24-24, all tied up late in the third quarter, and 
I was very impressed by the midshipmen as well. Don Nealon, uh, one of the good guys in college. Coach, both these guys really enjoyed visiting with them yesterday. For Amos Zaraway, he goes for 95 today. Mark Bulger is the story, 24, 36, 354 yards, two touchdowns, and a very good defensive effort by a very inexperienced defense for West Virginia. That's the difference in the game. The final score once more, West Virginia 45 and Navy 24. That's a wrap for us for David Norrie. I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long.